Yeah. And guess what? We're live. Hey, hey. Hi. 1963. 63. 63, episode. 63. Yep. Episode 63 of the Wide Awake Babylon Podcast. Yep. Chris, Tom, Isaac, Wally, and our good friend Georgie. Good to see you all. From Alaska, the land of the free. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he'll talk closer. to us about the freedom. Am I closer? Right there. Yeah. 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 Just away. And point it up. Point it up again, like that. Yeah. Right. That works. Got it. Yeah. See, there we go. Now everybody can be heard. We must be heard. I was reading negative comments. <laughs> so I, must I, heard I like it. Discouraging word. Someone said, oh, this moron again. I'm like, yeah, you know, there's been, I, I have to say, there's probably been quite a few people who think that. One of them was, you shouldn't smoke so much opium. It's like, I don't have any opium. I've never had opium in my life. I don't know what this like. That's one of those things, kind of like, you know, well, peyote. I guess opioids, like pharmaceuticals, mm, no, and painkillers, so that's different. No, I always said that the, the powders are programmers, the plants are deprogrammers. Hmm. Right? So all the powders. The chemicals. They, they program you. Well, except for the hoppe or whatever. Well, yeah, that's, that's well, what it's not the way it's for. I mean, it's the, <clears throat> anything, where can it be turned, anything can be turned into a powder. Yeah. You know. Well, yeah, like, you know, you got cannabis and then you got dabs and concentrates which you may as well just be smoking heroin well i think i think there's a time and a place for all the medicines that have been brought to us that our bodies you know have any receptors to even feel like so you know if you do like have your leg blown off by some mine in some country like by all means give that guy some fucking morphine it should be there it should be available but for people to do it on a you know, get hooked on it, and then right, like, you know, yeah, they're yeah. they're applying their grandmother's TV to like get high for another day or whatever. Right, like, right. Yeah. You know, so there's two different sides of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. yeah. Time and a place. You know? I think the difference between a drug and a medicine is yeah. your attention for using it. Yeah. Well, you know, there's you know, like I mean, like. <clears throat> I mean, technically, heroin can be used as a medicine if you're like really sick or something like that. Have like really, it could be used for pain. But yeah, it was used up here quite well, a bit. It was called laudamin. Yeah, yeah, and some, yeah I mean, some people are sick because they can't get their heroin, and that's something completely different. Yeah, yeah right, but, right. Uh, yeah, and you know, naturally, they say that you know a lot of those opioids cause. Uh, it's like it re removes one pain, but it puts a whole another different kind of pain in you. Yeah. So you're always in pain anyway. Yeah. You know, and it's just the psychological aspect of it. Well, it's well, hard to say something that like. That's something that doesn't have like a consciousness is bad. You know, it's like well, a hard to say, you know, it's, it's like, not, it's, it's, some it's like you didn't choose to be bad. People are bad. How they use it is bad. Or people good. aren't necessarily bad. Just some people are more, uh, have more strength than the drugs they ingest. And, you know, well, yeah, it's super, super strong and super addicting. And then inherently that some people just can't say no. You yeah. Know? yeah. Some people just don't have their shit together. Yeah, and then they break down morally because they. they well, I was saying shit. they turn the, the the like the thing that could be a medicine into, into a, something drug. bad. Yeah. Like people <clears throat> make something bad. Like it's not like this like thing chose to be bad or good. Like people took it and turned it into something bad. Right, and well, also the, you got to think that for years and years and years we've been like in a medical system where there's no money in the cure. It's just money in the maintenance. Mm -hmm. And if they mm -hmm. if they stop the pain by opioids is not necessarily the right medicine for the job you know yeah. so one might be masking the pain even like when i broke my collarbone like i was doing you know pharmaceutical opiates and like i'm like oh yeah this is great i can move my arm and it's like in reality i you know i could hear it click it's like oh probably shouldn't be clicking the broken bone in your fucking you know, shoulder and you know but i should have the pain is there to tell you you should not move you right know? right right like swelling and, yeah, so th then you, you're, you're being prescribed the, the, the drug by a doctor that should be, you know, looking, but in reality, that drug is, like, not the right thing. They should be, you should be sitting there in pain and not moving at all. You know, there's nothing you can do for a broken collarbone, but sit there. And wait. And wait. Wait. And wait and wait. And wait. And just keep waiting. Yeah. yeah. So, so you can do the pain pill, now you'll get up and just yeah. keep damaging it. Keep right. damaging it. Exactly. There's a lot of that, that yeah. people, you know, if you could mask the pain or mask any kind of uncomfortable symptom, you just keep masking it with pain pills. Some people just do that with Advil. 
Yeah. And, and you never actually heal the underlying cause. So it starts damaging your quality of life and probably your longevity too. Yeah. How long you're going to live. It's yeah. going to shave years off you. Yeah, it's all connected. Yeah, because that's yeah. just, it's kind of like American cities, right? Yeah. They go to shit and it just all goes chaotic. Well, the body does that at some point. You know, we see that a lot, right? And, you know, it does. it's happening to younger and younger people. Yeah. Where the body's completely out of whack, and it's such a heavy load, and they start just throwing the Ozempic at them and everything else. Well, now that's compromising them, right? Because they're not getting, you know, it just makes you not want to eat. So you're not getting nutrition, yeah. right? And then now you got to start pulling all the thing out of your joints, out of your bones, out of your, you know, your stomach lining. It starts robbing your liver, yeah. right? So you're, you know, yeah, you're losing weight or, you know, you're getting over your symptoms. You're not feeling them. But the damage being done to the body is not being addressed, yeah. right, to where it needs to be. And that's why I think, you know, the plants to me are the first step because they kind of – the thing that I've noticed that like with pharmaceuticals, they get you high. There's no doubt. You're ooh, loopy, loopy. Yeah. But I find that the plants kind of wake up your consciousness to what where this ailment stemming from. Yeah. So that way, when you do go for, say, Western medicine, at least you understand what what the emotional process behind this whole healing you need to go through is. Because, right. you know, there's people, I've seen them, where they'll walk around like on a hobble, like, oh, God, this leg, it just always hurts, it always hurts, it always hurts. And they'll sit in a plant medicine ceremony, and they'll deal with some emotional pain. You know, it's like it's tied to that leg. It sounds preposterous. But when you realize the human being is just an energy field. And in those energy fields, there's certain feeling centers, right? And they all correlate to some aspect of life. And if they can get right in there and look at it, I mean, I've watched them go, oh, my God, my leg doesn't hurt anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, it just kind of goes away. <clears throat> no, I'm sure that my back is connected to the arm, connected to the... Right, right. You know, we work hard every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, some people just sit at a desk all day and type, and that in itself is just too much. Right, it could even just be like open energy centers that are kind of have a hole in them, yeah. and they're just taking in toxicity from the outside. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, the, it's yeah. not that hard to absorb negative energy. It's just not. Yeah, and I mean, you have to be able to, to dispose of it somehow too. You yeah, know? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, well, that's what I think the medicine is like. You'd be able to trans transmute the different energies from different walks of even your life and everyone else around you. You know, product of your environment. We all we all make each other, you know, shed positive light, or you know, one person helps the other. And some people get into like a downward spiral where they. They they need like the the help up you know and, mm-hmm. and like you can give your energy to a person to the helping hand you know but it's like that thin line of like helping somebody or like enabling them yeah are you now their yeah. fucking morphine yeah yeah it's like, you know what I mean are you the cure that cures that uh, cure it's like yeah yeah right well, you, are you at, the master at of a certain symptoms? point people need to be able to stand up and do it other you know position heal this a lot and this there's yeah. there's a, a huge difference between like the intention between western medicine and the jungle medicines or plant medicines which is in western medicine it's to mask or numb out or just kind of make sure that you don't feel any pain it's like it's like to find a path to keep you on that medication for life it's like yeah. that and then the 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 jungle medicines plant medicines they're making you there's it's not making you feel good it's making you feel worse there's this yeah. it's an ordeal they're all ordeal medicines for the most part and that ordeal is the healing process itself that the western medicine won't allow happen yeah I think that the plants definitely can bring up to the surface the underlying cause because mm-hmm. I think a lot of it really is emotional damage. I think a lot of, you know, pains in the body that people have, I think a lot of that is that because you start stressing one system and there's not enough energy there to keep it going. It starts pulling from other places. You know, like if, if, you, if you are a coffee drinker, you need to like throw something else in there like uh, hard-boiled eggs are good. Uh, bone broth is good. Um, get your fucking electrolytes because the coffee's take it after a while, it needs to start pulling calcium and everything else out of your joints. Your joints will start to ache. So, you know, it's like, um, there's just those certain things that you have to do. If you're going to consume certain things, you got to know what it's doing to you, mm-hmm. you know, but that's, that's a level <clears throat> of personal responsibility that, I mean, I know there's plenty of people out there that, are at 
that place of personal responsibility. But those, you're not seeing that in the media. You're seeing madness, just madness, you know, a lack of personal responsibility all across the board. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like, so, and you know, it's like with the drugs, well, that's a personal responsibility issue more than anything else. I mean, really, for the most part, it's a consensual crime. There, uh, there's no victim. So it's not like, I mean, who's the crime against? Right. But then, you know, we're in that kind of society where people feel despair and they start getting irresponsible with it. They have no personal responsibility, mm-hmm. you know, and that, and we see more of that across the board, you know, whether it be drugs or sex or, you know, cheating and money and, you know, politics and the whole thing. And that's pretty much what we see. And then our entertainment is pretty much fucking absurd. Really? I mean, you know, you, you sit there and look at the television. It's like, what the hell is this? It's like, this has nothing to do with being alive. Right. You know, right. Well, and it's like even the personal responsibility for entertainment. I have really seen the TV in, in a little while. Yeah, I try to limit yeah. my doses. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, but, I don't um, really get it. Yeah. But, you know, but that, you have to pay for TV and then you have to pay for the commercials and like, mm-hmm. how the TV is commercial. It's like, I doesn't seem to be a solid investment of time, you know, mm-hmm. <clears throat> a lot of, a lot of more creative things I could be doing. And then, right. But all the, at the same rate, I do like to veg out and watch movies like anybody sure, else. Sure, you know? sure. But if there's no commercials in the middle of the movie that's trying to get me to buy a new Xbox or right, right. whatever. It's know? sneak in that brand identification. Yeah. In the movie. It's like everybody's <laughs> drinking a Coke. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> yeah, that's not real. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, it's even like, you know, with entertainment, yeah. people aren't, it, it seems that America's really not that choosy because they'll watch just the most absurd shit. It's like, this is out of control. It's like, this is your time. This is your consciousness. This is your awareness. This is your life. Well, and you're also oh. a product of, you know, you, you start watching a show and all of a sudden you you start talking as if you were in that show, you know, it is, it becomes your reality. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know, I've like the whole game of Thrones thing. Say, okay, it's one thing if you're, you're at like the LARPing festival or Renaissance festival or whatever, but, but now it's a whole new dialect that you, you, people walking around, people people walk around and talk, you know, (laughs) I remember when when y'all are watching, y'all just recently watched the, the gentleman on Netflix. Yeah. Y'all are talking in like, uh, what do they call it? Posh for a little posh while. British. <laughs> it's yeah. it's yeah, pretty yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah just, that's a cool thing about language though. It's not necessarily what you say. It's how you say it. So, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all that, yeah, all that, all that, yeah, exactly. All that comes, comes across in a certain way. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but what it breaks down to is people like being spoken to in whatever dialect they're speaking. So if you're so um, all my balls is going to be a real show one day. Probably, kind of. Probably, yeah. probably, <laughs> that was, yeah. that was no. Jackass, wasn't that Jackass? <laughs> yeah, and if I ever talk to like a nice, sweet little old lady that you know on the phone that wants information on building whatever, and I hear like a hint of the South, I'll slow down. Like, like I'm talking to a nice, sweet little old lady from the South. Like she needs to be able to understand what I'm saying, and and it's not. You know, not disrespectful or to her necessarily, but I, you know, same thing. It's like people that know broken English speak to them in broken English, and they'll get it a lot better than putting everything. Right. You have to kind of, if you're going to communicate with them, there has to be a hi. I'm in your world. Yeah, and not people come meet, to mine. Right. Right. Or a meeting in the middle somewhere. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, well, like, to me, I think you know, if there's yeah. common respect, you're going to meet in the middle. Yeah. So exactly. you can bring who you are, you can bring who they are, and you know where the middle is. Yeah, but that's uh, that's dialect. That's the language. It's beautiful. Sometimes I'm amazed that we can even communicate at all. You know, all. Do you think that's what's actually going on, though? Yeah, everybody communicates to one, you know, one way or another, <laughs> right? So, and there's We're like, talking. what are we up to, like oh, nine billion, no nine billion, or eight billion, or something like that? Mm-hmm. You know, and then we're all able to converse in some way to somebody somewhere. Yeah, you know? that's true. And. That's true. Uh, like that's cool until you go to a country that doesn't like americans well because you know, they do exist that's fine yeah. yeah italy was like that okay yeah italy was a little bit like that but they, you can understand why that's the amount of tourists over the decades you're like you just get tired of whoever your tourists are yeah no matter who they are yeah, <laughs> yeah the, i just take the just i just americans take the role of full-blown observer yeah. right i observe the customs and i try to understand them right away right, right? to go to so i could be polite in their world yeah, you know, it's sense. like 
Yeah. Like when you go to the jungle, there's a certain way to be. Right. You go to Italy, there's a certain way to be. You know, you Madeira, they, were, they liked Americans. They were... Well, I, I think they just got used to them because the cruise ships pull up all the time. Maybe, yeah. Right? And look, here it comes, you know. Well, that's a, yeah, financial. Cruise is like the worst, like, array of humans. But they just <laughs> say right on the coast. Americans, yeah. I'm well, sure. Not, definitely not one of the best samplings. Well, again, it's what do you choose for your entertainment? Right? I mean, and then, I well, choose- then you, be- you become part of it. Like, you know, people watch the Sopranos seasons or, or so whatever. You're starting to talk like you start, Yeah, yeah. Is, oh, you're doing it. Oh, what okay, else is going cool. right You know, I've had to remind my brother, you know, he's, he's not yeah. Italian, but he did work for a nice little Italian guy doing tile for five years. And mm-hmm. he watched probably every random episode of whatever Italian show. He, I mean, he made wine with a little Italian man every year. You know, he <laughs> got into their customs and probably ate a bunch of pasta and like. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's cool. He submerged himself in, and uh, it's kind of like a cultural thing. Yeah, and which to, is to which is cool to appreciate it. You know, and, and, and but you know, now to this day, I get him to talk about tile, and he starts talking like he's Italian. Just he's, you know, he doesn't even know he's doing it. He just like starts dropping this boo 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 boo, you know, and, it, <laughs> and it, cause it's that's what it associates with. And he spent you know five years right. of his life doing something. Mm-hmm. That's I always found that when I watched yeah. like. Goodfellas or something. Yeah. I mean, that's what I grew up. I mean, when I was growing up, my grandfather had a – he ran a dealership in Omaha, Nebraska, which there was a place called the Old Market. It's full of Italians. You know, and I would just see him as a kid. You know, I'd go into Coniglia's or Mr. C's. There was a press club. There was all these places my grandpa would take us to eat. And it was one of those things where, you know, you'd walk up the door. Hey, John, how you doing? We got a table for you right over here. And there's a line. Right? Everybody's got reservations. But he walks in, the table comes out. And Oh, this is kind of wild. And, you know, that's my grandfather. You know, so I got to s- kind of watch that a little bit, never really knowing what it was, and then watching, like, gangster movies, you know, Italian gangster movies. Yeah. There's a quality, I mean, you know, the, obviously the violence and the bullshit. And, yeah, but, but, the, but respect, there's just something about it that has a cultural strength to it, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, respect is free. It doesn't cost a thing, you know. Okay. And uh, I'm sure like, Spear likes people. a good gangster. Yeah. Right, I mean, you know, possible burglars and gangsters—they're part of our culture too. You know, right? you just have to pay the consequences. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's you, you know, like kind of like rock climbing. It, I know that well. Yeah, I don't like rock climbing. Well, I, you know, it's, I, it's weird. I, it's like that's I don't mind part risking, of the addiction. Well, yeah, I don't really mind risking my life necessarily, but risking my life for n- no purpose, like at work and other multiple dangerous things. But right. why am I trying to climb this rock face? Is there any? Because God's up there. God's up there. I did. I did it for like twenty five years. You did. And for me, is it is it freeing? It can be. Well, I think those that operate at the highest levels, like when you look, when you watch uh, Honold, uh, what's his name, Uh, Alex Honold, Alex Honold, and he's a free climber. So this is like crazy beyond human capability stuff. But what I think he experiences is just total presence because he can't be anywhere else. He can't have another thought. If he is, he's off like that. And he says he says this. But for him, I, I think the, his brain's developed differently. So the, the amygdala, the part of the brain that's the fight or flight part, is just different in him than anybody else. Well, I mean, it's just different. He's born differently. I'm, I'm sure my and so he can barely yeah. feel it when we're just our hands are sweating. You're freaking out just watching his videos. He's cool as a cucumber. Well, he also dealt with stone, really. He also, I'm pretty sure, dealt with like really bad like suicidal depression as well. Yeah, that's and that was he almost like it said like sometimes I was up there. I really didn't care whether I. I don't know. If I died, it wasn't like that big of a deal to me. So it was like almost like a way to like, in a way, conquer that. I don't know. I just wonder if it's like, you know, there's, because there are, there are different energy compartments in a human. And adrenaline is a big, junky one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Dopamine's a big, junky one. Yeah. I mean, you can junk out on just about any of them, the different energy centers, the different yeah. effects they have. Yeah. But I mean, you know, that's, that's America's way, a long way off from understanding any kind of reality around self-modulation you know what i mean self-modulation is not something they're very good at if they go if it gets good they go way too far if it gets bad they go way too far you know they don't know how to hold a balance you know they, they can't really do the modulating of the energies how to combine them a little bit of this a little bit of that a little bit of this and to me i think you know it's like you know when you're abusing it when any of those centers when you're not actually present you're too wrapped up in what you're doing to actually be present. Like if someone called your name, would you hear it? 
in those moments, right? Because usually if you're out of balance, something's going to call you back to balance, right? So you got to have your ears open to hear that. Otherwise, you're going, you know, train slides off the tracks. You go sideways. There's no two ways about it. You know, I used to know this guy. He stayed with us off and on. And he would go chase these mad adventures. You know, I'm like, dude, this is going to last like three months. And that's about it. And inevitably, it would last about three months. He'd be broke, have nowhere to go. And he would just, you know, it's like chasing all this bliss. And every day, every time you land in oblivion, because you go too far. You don't know how to modulate your own experience to understand that you are a being having an experience. You ain't the fucking experience. You're the being having it. So any kind of experience that's getting out of control for you, it's because you don't know how to modulate the energies. Right, you're applying the wrong fucking juice to to a situation that is calling for something vastly different than that. Gasoline on the fire rather than water. Or, mm. Yeah, or diesel instead of fucking unleaded. Oops. Oops. Uh oh, that's a problem. Yeah, you know, it's it's that kind of thing. And you know, we can on our outside. Yeah, we can do it. We know that if you know you want to sweeten your coffee, don't grab the salt. But inside, you just fucking toss whatever energy's in the fucking room into your fucking stew pot. And then guess what? You get a stew in that. I mean, it's almost like we concoct how we're going to feel. And we think it's food. We think it's people. We think it's all the stresses around us. And no, that's, that's the big fallacy. That you are basically talked out of on a regular basis to modulate yourself. Right? I mean, the thoughts in the head, they sure aren't helping. They're saying, go off the fucking deep end that way. Go off the deep end that way. You know, it take, I think it takes many years, not just you wake up one day and you're enlightened. I think it takes several fucking decades to get the kind of discipline required to actually manage your own mind, to manage your own desires, to manage which direction you're going in and why. And to never lose sight of that. And if you are pulling in energies that are making you lose sight of that, of where what your actual real life is, that one that has full of well-being and presence and fortitude and strength and courage and understanding and wisdom and intelligence and all those things, you better know what the fuck you're doing. You know, and I, to me, it's just so sad that instead of anybody taking personal responsibility for their actions – for where they are in their life, for the lack of being able to take care of themselves on all levels. If they don't have, you know, yeah, trauma isn't real. <laughs> There's nobody who doesn't know what it is. You know, you got a lot of people that might pretend they had, don't have any or have never had any, but they're just lying to themselves and everybody else. They might as well be NPCs, right? Don't, don't bother with them. But everybody knows what trauma is. But are we supposed to just sit in it? Are we supposed to change the world around us to make ourselves feel better? And when you start changing the world around you, who gets to say? Right? It's like, again, it, it comes down to personal responsibility, self-modulation. You know, there's, there's, no, there's no getting out of that. You know, and it's just hard to come by. You know, and it's like, so... <clears throat> well, you know your own levels, really. Right, well, well, there's you know there's a certain thing like learning in life. People, everybody needs to learn, yeah, and I, you know, I just, you should be able to try to teach people around you anything you have. You know, might be useful for them, but it's also their their responsibility to to experiment. You know, in their own life. You know, to, everyone makes their own choices, and people make thousands upon ten thousands of choices every day. You know, whether it be to look left or move your hand or whatever sometimes you know one choice is nominal and we do it second nature you know other times the choice that you make right now immediately defects upon the next choice and then and next choice and the whole issue of events issues from one decision you know and uh but as soon as you're committed to a goal then you know the universe will will move to like all matter of unforeseen instances and, and meetings and material assistance will come to aid you in your goal whatever right. whatever goal you're trying to achieve you know if you're, if you're focused yeah. correctly yeah right because i've noticed that on those paths where that happens you know you have those synchronistic moments where what you need shows up yeah. if you're doing it right there's always you know ten thousand choices but everything's offering you all the time yeah. and it's just distraction right well, we also have to learn to say no Yes, yes. Yeah, or, <laughs> no is the big word. Yeah, or we accept the omens that come too, you know, like mm -hmm. 
if I'm ever out and about and like all of a sudden the glasses break and stuff, you're like, oh, well, that's it's a cue to leave. You know, why are, why are your glasses breaking at the restaurant? Like, oh, the waiter dropped the whole, like, oh, well, that's timing to, to leave. You know, you take the omens that the, the universe gives you. you know? Yes, yes. And being present enough to, to see those omens come and float by, mm-hmm. you know. So you stay out of trouble. Yeah. Well, right. So you try, you, you try to keep yourself out of trouble and you know, not make trouble for anybody else. You know, it's easy, it's easy you know life. You know? it, it, yeah. It's like the minute you understand how to modulate, you start seeing the line, where the balance line is and how far off it you are. And, and no matter what thoughts are haunting you, that voice will step in and go, yo, you're off track. You know, and it, it, if, you're fi- if you're really about it, you can't help but see that. You know, it, the awareness just goes right to it. It's like, shit, I'm off, I'm off. It's like, yeah, it's like, I, you know, there's times where I'll have to go to places I really don't want to go. And they'll hit me like, it'll hit me like a train. It's like, it's so, the, the, how would I put this without sounding weird? I'll just sound weird. The vibrational level of certain places is really whacked and low. And you have to go, you know, like submit to that. I mean, that to me, it's just a test of my character, really. You know, because I already know that, you know, all of this despair, all of this depression, it's not mine. Yeah, I'm in it. It's like a big bubble you're swimming around in for a while. You know, so it's around. You notice it, but not having any attachment to it at all. You know, and a lot of times the way I'll deal with things like that is I just start making jokes. I'm like, come to Flint. Come to Flint, Michigan. In three days, you'll know what wanting to commit suicide is about. (laughs) Because it is just, oh, my God. <laughs> this is for me. I mean, I guess the people who live there, it's their life. I mean, I don't, but I go there, it just knocks me sideways. Houston does it to me. Houston, <laughs> that's another sweltering pit. Memphis. <laughs> I've never been there. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Jeez, I'm from Alaska. All I could say is Anchorage. I'm like, oh, man, Anchorage isn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, mean, I, I would imagine. No, Anchorage it's not, is probably it's not more that free bad. than any city in the world. Well, no, like this one year, a few years back, there was like this thing in January. You know, it's cold. Like, it's yeah. probably, it stays below zero. They have compounded ice and all that. It's whatever. The, but, uh, it gets the, well, in the you? month of January, there was like 250 uh, car thefts. You know, people, like, 250. It doesn't seem like a lot, but. What, you know, when you have a quarter million people or whatever, and there's only so many days in the month, you start thinking about like, geez, it was like eight car thefts a day. And like, the city's not that big. You know, it's like people with joy riding or like, do people, like, you know, like bums or bang, Who's moving to bums. Alaska? Well, I, <laughs> that's well, I what I want to know. Well, but you know, so it's like, that, you know, that's a big city. And that's a big city. And it's like, where do you, you guys are talking about like Houston and Detroit? I'm like, oh man, I, I feel blessed to. <laughs> Have a small city. Yeah, well, it's, it's having smaller city problems. They, they're still like the saying, like you, you know, once you make it to Alaska, you know, and you fly into Anchorage, and you're still about a half hour from Alaska. You know? <laughs> right. right yeah, yeah. But the mountains they surround it. You know, there's tons of stuff to outdoors, and right. you know, depending on what, what time of year. You got to get up to Homer. Well, once you get that far, you have to go down to Homer. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. South. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't really. Yeah, the, I, don't, yeah I, would, I don't know that land at all. Yeah, it's the uh, well, twenty miles west of where I, I live. There, there's this uh, town called Anchor Point. You know, they've got King Salmon Run and uh, like Silver Salmon, little dollies and stuff. And they uh, they have this sign, and we're it's like right next to the tractor launch. Where the tractor will launch the charter boats out into the ocean. You know, but there's this sign that says North America's most westerly highway point. Like. Like Key West is the furthest it's south you can grow. Yeah. But uh yeah, this is all North America's most western highway. And then you have to keep driving past there another twenty miles and it kinda of goes back east and that's <laughs> that's where I live. <laughs> yeah. Eagles fly about the city like every day, you know, and moose come have babies in your yards and, <laughs> right, and uh, right, right, right. We've got two stoplights. And it's got a perfectly good airport though, if you guys are well, there's a, a possibly next summer, uh, right around Fourth of July, uh, just after Fourth of July, there's a Bitcoin event up there for two days. The Bitcoin veterans. Well, that's on the other side of the state. It's on the other side of the state, but yeah. if we go there for that, then you'd we'll be about over. halfway to my house. Well, then we'll, we'll, we'll go the rest of the way and just go visit yeah. Homer and yeah. check out the mountains and see some we'll drive one of those RVs. Oh well, but, I I don't know about that, but this this is an impromptu plan we're making right in this moment. We could we could take a boat <laughs> we could out take of a Seattle boat. and then just. 
go to the coast. Oh, yeah. That would be take? cool. How long does that take? Um, I mean, I'd actually really like to drive the Can-Am highway. I think the, it takes about a week to go. By know. boat? By boat? Uh, How long I does it take to drive? 10 days, 10 days. 10 days by boat. Maybe, oh. maybe two weeks. But it depends on where you're going to. Everywhere. Well, somebody told me you could spend your whole life exploring Alaska and still not see everything. So you can't go everywhere. You got to oh. pick somewhere. Pick, yeah, pick and choose. And you can't, and you also, he wants to go to Juneau. You can't drive to Juneau, unfortunately. You have to fly or take a boat. Yeah. So you park our cars at the airport. We'll, we're going we'll, to we'll, we'll cover the maximum coverage. Double, double, <laughs> double maximum coverage. Two steps on you. Boom! Yeah. Like three Flat different cars. And shit. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it's, it's funny. Like, uh, I don't know, a decade ago or something, there's a story, and, and, and people have blind faith in their GPS and stuff, and the ladies like, takes the Alaska ferry. Uh, you know, and you, we were trying to get to Valdez, and it'll, if you're on, you know, your GPS on your phone, it'll bring you to Whittier. And you go through this one-way tunnel that also is shared with the train, you know, and it's a little it's a traffic light or whatever. <laughs> and it goes through the mountain. You get to the other side in Whittier, and Whittier, there is, basically the whole city is in one building. I forget what they call it. There's a name I've for seen that. A thing yeah, that. And, uh, yeah, but that's where you get on the Alaska Marine Highway. And this, this lady drives off to the fucking end of the dock when there's no ferry there. Because that's where GPS is telling her to go this way. She just and keeps like, going. And she just going. It's like, right off the dock. Right off the dock. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's Stunning. Like, like you just I made it through. <laughs> this plan is so It self-selects. Like, uh, well, it <laughs> no, she didn't die. I, 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 I don't. She didn't die. The dog didn't die. But I think she, she might have lost her cat or something. And like she had like all her stuff in there. And like you were just. Must have been looking at the map and not on her road, GPS. Right? Yeah, but it brings you on the dock, and you just can't be wrong. I. I <laughs> You know, you know what someone needs to develop yeah. is a windshield that has a mapping system, like off in the corner. I think mapping system. Because Cadillac has that. <laughs> Never have. I just, yeah, I'm BMW old, I'm old school. I don't even look at cars like that. Yeah, I use like a bicycle. They've got a bicycle to hold your iPhone, you know, yeah. and I just strap it to my handle of the, the steering wheel. So, right, so you can see both. And uh, yeah, I was, you get driving the other day, and it's like, he's like, yeah, your phone's probably getting dizzy because you got to like spin it around <laughs> twice every time to, to you know make a turn or whatever. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, that's what my phone thinks I'm doing. Got these modern problems we have. Yeah, modern modern. Problems. yeah, I wonder if I could even read a map anymore. Oh, well, that's that's a dying art, you know. It really is. Yeah, we used to go and actually, you know, go from city to city mm-hmm. to go follow concerts and stuff, and go to a concert in a city you've never been to. And nobody oh, knows where you are, and there's no GPS. You have to print out directions, if that, you know, copy cool. them down, you know, which way you want to go on the highways. And once you get to the, to where's it, where, where do you do? You like look for the guy with the bumper sticker and follow him, you know? Yeah. It's like but, I did a service job in LA for, I don't know, 10 years growing up, working for my dad. And, uh, well, maybe not 10, maybe a little less than that. Um, but we had to use a little, what do they call those? Key- they were the guy. Oh, the the triple uh, A trip. Maps? No, these were like yeah, they had a name. Uh, There's the gold key gold key maps. Was, yeah, that book was like that thick. You yeah. have to like go to the direct part of the city and map yeah. the whole damn thing. Oh, out. map yeah. quest. There was map quest. Was like oh, the first. No. One. This was yeah, that was the first one books. you could print out. Yeah, yeah. the map quest. No, we, we had it rough. We're so rough. I'm talking about. Alaska, the pioneers. People I, mean, I didn't live, I didn't live up Alaska. there at, at map map time. I've only been up there since 2011, so you know we've had GPS and all that since. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, maps, I, maps I definitely want to experience like all day, and you know, and and then go and experience nothing but night. Right? Yeah, sun barely comes. Well, out. yeah, and then that's you a, get to see a, it do this, right? That's the thing. It's really nice in the winter, but it gets so frigid up by the hot springs. So. Yeah. Late winter, like before the equinox, you know, end of February, beginning of March kind of time. That's that's nice because it's still dark at night and you go north and everything's melting really fast. Right, because the sun's coming. Yeah, the, sun, the sun's starting, to, but it's just still frozen, you know, so it's still warm during the day, but at it's night, chilly. Right. Depending on the jet streams and how much energy we get. I mean, it could be warm. I mean, we'll see what the winter has to bring. The <laughs> yeah. further, the warmer our winter is, the colder your guys will be. It pushes that, that right. warm pushes air south. all the way up, and then it just takes that Arctic blast and sends it down to Texas. Right, right, right. I think you guys are still on this side of that whole thing, though. You're still up on on the this is actually the continental divide. You yeah. guys are going. You guys get yeah. the warm air coming up over the mountain. Yeah, growing yeah. up in Texas, we had blue northers like that would come, and it would be like. 
It would be nine degrees and it could drop 40 degrees in an hour. Yeah. It would just be like. Yeah, here it doesn't actually, I mean, it might, we're at 9,500 feet. Yeah. And it might get bone chilling for, you know, like below zero, maybe two weeks tops. And at night it'll drop, but it gets single digit. But most of the days it's 30 to 50, depending. Yeah. Yeah, and then you're out in direct sunlight. I mean, because it, it's really never cloudy in the winter unless it's snowing. So you're just getting beaten by the sun. So you can run around out here in December in shorts and a t-shirt. Some days. Some days. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I'm used to it. I've lived I mean, on the way to and from the sauna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been living in these mountains a while. So, But this area, it, you don't really get any snow until spring. I mean, you'll get it, but it's just kind of five inches and it's gone in a day. The sun just cooks it off. Yeah. You don't really get the big heavy snows until spring. Yeah, we'll get heavy snows because it's, it's warm. You know, the, the warmer the climate, mm -hmm. you know, when it, the closer it is to, to 32 or that 30 degree range, and if the ground's frozen. But the, you know, the closer you are to, to right around that 32, the snowflakes get bigger and bigger and bigger until they turn into raindrops. Right, you right, know. Right. So if it's really cold and it's snowing, you, yeah, you got these little that. tiny, teeny, tiny flakes. You right, know? you have names and, for that. Uh, I've, I, I do not know all the different names no. for snow. Oh, no, because there's no. like 40. 40 yeah, there's 40 different, 40 different snow. names for, for snow. Uh, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. yeah, but... Yeah, Nook knows. Yeah, I bet. And then uh, no, I, I love the snow snakes when you're going down the road. And you're like, <laughs> What's a snow snake? It's basically the twirls of oh, the, wind the wind where, where you like can see you can see like, where the wind has been whipping across the road from. You can oh, see that you're okay. driving. You can see like the wind taking the snow. Oh, and it's kind of like yeah. snaking in hmm. front of you, right? Yeah. Making drifts. Oh, well, everything's so frozen that the snow doesn't stick to anything. Right. It's just like it just blows around. Right? It just blows around. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's well, all the time of year. I want to be there in summer. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and depending on like, so they have like rivers, and depending on the size of the river, you know, you're driving north, and there's areas where you're going through the canyons, you know, through the giant mountains. You can't even call them mountains. They're, they're mountains on right. both sides, yeah. but the snow doesn't hit the road, and uh, so the frost, you know, because you have the rivers and there's a lot of moisture, there's you know, condensation, but you can't get that high because it's you know basically turns into an ice particle mm -hmm. what well, sticks to the trees and uh and they call it like a hoarfrost or whatever we have that here yeah you have a hoarfrost oh yeah. that's beautiful yeah, yeah. you know you go through mm -hmm. winter wonderland you yeah know? yeah and then and, well, when, when it happens here is when it gets cold enough to do that yeah. and there's enough moisture in the air oh, the whole sky turns pastel yeah. like these pastel colors kind of mm -hmm. you know merging into one another if it happens oh, really? too early, it starts breaking trees and branches. We had a, we lost some a lot of branches. Yeah, yeah, we lost a bunch. We lost. Well, that's more of an ice quite. storm. But we do have for, like it'll, the fog will come into this valley and then just, just stick. Trees. So you get these little tiny icicles hanging yeah. from everything. Tiny little ones. Yeah, yeah. And the pines. Yeah. It, it's cool. I I like it. You know. No, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's it's got a different feel mm -hmm. to it. I mean, it's to me that's you know one of the things I've really appreciated about you know life on Earth. You know, is there's like certain things like that. Like you see that and it just hits you a different way. Yeah. And if you're, you know, if you actually have some time and you're not distracted and your senses about you and you can actually feel what that stimulates inside of you, it's actually, to me, that's really what connecting is, right? Yeah. That it hits you somehow. You're like, Oh, okay. So, and then you just kind of become it really. You just feel the whole thing. It's almost like you're part of it, mm -hmm. you know, or you're getting some view that's sacred. Right, like up here. It's like there's many days where I'll just be walking around and that that rock that rock formation right over there. So I'll just look at it and the sky behind it. It just grabs me for a few minutes. And I'll just stand there feeling like I'm, you know, floating almost. Like there's no me. There's just the, this awareness of that. Right. And there's not really a, a boundary between me and it anymore. It's almost like those certain scenes create a state of consciousness. And you're swimming in it anyway, mm -hmm. so it's just you're swimming in different waters. Yeah. If that makes any sense? Yeah. So yeah, getting get up there before it starts to warm up completely. And it's, you know, you might then we can drive like from we'll fly into my house and we'll drive all the way north to the hot springs, like thirteen hours oh, or yeah. something. Thirteen hours. 
No, 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 yeah, that's I'm down. That's cool. It's a road trip. You got to drive to, yeah, we're doing drive to Denali. Do we stay, we stay a few nights? Alaska, so. Oh, yeah, we're not going to just turn and burn. No, we're going to burn. No, we'll stay up there. All right, no, I, uh, I, I did some work for a sweet lady, Colleen, and uh, she has these two 30 foot yurts that have Airbnb. So oh, awesome. if we figure out when, we'll have to block out the dates. Oh, that'd be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. See, this plan's coming together yeah. right here on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, <laughs> while, we're, while we're there, I'll probably have to help her do some kind of carpentry work we'll all do it we'll all do it yeah <laughs> yeah I'm like cool yeah no she's super sweet we're getting but, uh, trained by you now yep yeah you guys are doing good thanks and that, that's looking like I can't wait to see it all backfilled too that's like Right. Yeah, tomorrow morning. Yeah, tomorrow morning. Well, just yeah. like to yeah. fill people in. I mean, you know, he's a master carpenter. So. Master, like beyond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I've uh, met one other person like you in my life. He's a wood wizard. Yeah, I've been a carpenter <laughs> since I was 12, and I'm 37. So it's two thirds of the life. <laughs> but, There's uh, a, we're, we're, you haven't seen these yet. But we're going to put a loss in the earth with a, a wooden staircase up. But it's not a circular staircase, it's an S. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I, okay, I showed, I've been it. showing you guys both kind of similar things, okay. but you guys have been so busy doing other things. It's yeah. like I get individual time. And so it's I'm having something to, else. I kind of feel like a parent. I'm like, you know, like this is what, but, you know, I, at some point we're all going to be here. Like tomorrow, you know. But, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, I want everybody to be included on decisions. And Absolutely. Like, you know, so. And then, but yeah, I, I, nice. I just default to what you guys think is best. Yeah. yeah. Right. But I, I showing everybody, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then you have other opinions and, you know, people have different ideas. Like you never know. Like that's the whole point. I just throw, bounce it off of everybody around you. I'm like, mm -hmm. I might be the master carpenter, but then I thought, do such a good job because I, you know, you can listen to what well, people what have to say. Master. Yeah. Because you know how to work with people too. Yeah. You're really good at it. You're really good at it. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, very cool to watch. You, you can't create the beauty by yourself, you know. You can't give me full credit for. I mean, you can give me a lot of credit for we got that large. Kid, right? <laughs> but, That's pretty much. But, yeah. but uh, look, it looks good. It looks good. Long longest, longest line of boards I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put up pictures of all yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Wait, um, I didn't show you about the pictures on the deck of the yurt that built in Washington, but there's there's a point because um, the twenty seven is on this side, right? So. Uh -huh. Well, there should be some kind of staircase coming up from the right, and I want to make benches that go around that pointy part. Oh, at the very end. Oh, yeah, okay. Maybe okay. like a, a seating area. Nice. Yeah. There's need more seating area. This would be yeah. epic. But yeah, I've got pictures of this, this beautiful little. You know, but yeah, you sign off it. You sign off it. You can, you can start building with. <laughs> I want I want stairs on that side because it's a, to walk all the way down and get up the little stairs, come all the way back. It's gonna. Yeah, it's so like tedious. So. I'll figure it out. Yeah. The next lumberyard run. Yeah, well. It's good having you here. It's been, it's been, yeah, it's been fun. It's yeah. been fun right here. Having you back. Yeah. Yeah. It's been yeah. What, a couple of years? It's been a couple of years. It's been a couple of years. Yeah. Time flies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've been busy. Yeah. Been busy up here. No, you've been getting a lot done. I, and I love to see, you know, remember the conversations we had years ago. It's like, yeah, that. It, to find an idea and materialize it and make it like yeah. it's like you guys did it yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i was yeah. like so what do yeah. we put the trade in <laughs> you know what no one got hurt doing yeah. that no that's good yeah. no that's, that was intense well no, we do dangerous things all the time but one of them is not going to be snowmobiling up over a mountain pass right like, you know it's right. like yeah, yeah. and like but maybe or rock climbing, whatever gets you fancy, you know. <laughs> like rock climbing, I'm, I'm rock climbing is one thing. Bouldering, you I'm know. Another is like climbing. cliffhanger, like on the movie, you know. Like it's totally different. Like to risk your life for when, to talk to God. I guess that works. You know, this yeah. the reason behind the madness. We well, don't have to risk your life to do that. You just got to yeah. live your life to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And, we're gonna, you know, one, <laughs> not that I'm not gonna go climb some boulders. There's something beautiful up there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'll, but I'll monkey, you, I'll monkey around on the yurt project because it's it's part of. You're more of a scrambler, boulder scrambler, yeah. instead of a face climber. A face climber, yeah, exactly. And I, yeah, that never interested. I did it once, and it, I had to. I, it was either okay. I'm either gonna just drop I like, and I like pray hiking. Or, I like hiking up hills to uh, the top of the giant rock. You know, right. like a, a pride rock or whatever. I like. I like a nice perch. Yeah. But I don't want to go up the face. I want to hike around. You mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, go find a place to sit down. Yeah, find and a nice talk place. To God. Yeah, talk to God. So yeah. you don't have to go up in the face and stuff hanging away. Yeah, like, you like taking the long road. 
to talk to God. I suppose in some fashion, sometimes. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the quick way is straight up. Yeah. The elevator, yeah. Your phone's not on. Pot- it, it's on. It's on. It's, it's on. You have to turn it off. Yeah, all right. Get rid of this. <laughs> I'm just going to like turn this. it off. He's not going to like it. It's just this thing. Well, what it's, is it? it? I, you know, it's foam. It just does what it wants. <laughs> it's a stupid thing. It's by the, the way, wish everybody has. A, you know, that's why I don't answer many calls. I don't have to. <laughs> if it's important, I will. Well, you guys have decent. Uh, I'm a great, you know, Wi-Fi up this way. Mm-hmm. Cell service comes in once in a while. Yeah, and, and they have to and, turn on that. Well, it really called. justifies you know paying for for YouTube or whatever, or Spotify. You can have the music at the job site, yeah. mm-hmm. but but uh, but yeah, no, it's it's not bad being away from your phone. No, you know? it's not not at all. But some people who are tied to it, and I I totally get it. Running a business is you get up in the morning, make sure the world's still here, just real quick. Right, and I got a time, like a twenty minutes. Yeah, there's a time span. to return phone calls and stuff, and yeah. Occasionally, you know, you get sucked in. Back in the son of a bitch, you got sucked in. Back in the times, we had maps. We also had the phone that was connected, you know, to the wall. Mm-hmm. And people some talked people on the phone a lot then. There, there are a couple of people in the world that still, you know, refuse to get cell phones and and uh, they still even put. Do they put phone lines in your house? Uh, uh, I know AT and T won't install a landline, but if you already have a landline, they'll get, they'll get they'll, you. They'll, you know, keep it up and running. <laughs> Yeah, well, and the, if the power goes out, Wi-Fi is out, Wi-Fi calling is out. The pa- cell towers are all out because the power is out, right? But a landline, it still uh, works. It still works. And uh, actually, Mesh Tastic is this. It's this low, small, cheap little uh, ham radio device, basically. But you don't need a license for this particular band it uses. And so they're actually, that's what the Bitcoin veterans are doing in North Carolina right now. They're setting up mesh tastic networks for communication in a place that has none. Starlink those and that. Good. Yeah, those guys know what they're doing. They're, they're great. Actually, most like house phones now are actually run off the internet. They're hooked up to the wire, like dependent on the wireless. Well, yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah. You know, but uh, if your house is old enough. I mean, we got, there's got to be a date. Like, when when did they stop putting phone? No, they'll come in there. Like, I used to I think do they it. They'll come probably in there. do. Right? Well, this house, I think this house has one. It, no, yeah. it did. It doesn't now. And yeah, they'll, they'll, when they come there. in, they'll like basically like when I used to go in, if I used to do that, like install internet, like you have a landline. Basically, like we're supposed to like take it out and switch you over to the wireless system. Well, yeah, you know? you gotta, and you a lot of people don't phone. like that. Yeah, gotta have everything spying on. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. It's like they're they're surveilling us. It's like, did you ever understand that they're doing that? Because we're scared of you. Yeah, that's the reason. That's the real reason. To lose control. Yeah, I mean, why else would you want to know what someone's well, up to all the time? Not, well, for how much surveilling it's really. done, you know, and the, the crimes that are committed, it's like people need to be kind to each other, you know, and... and uh, that would be, I mean, be a good start. But uh, as far as the government surveilling goes, they, you know, they, that's here to stay. There's... They're no, never taking no, those no, cameras no, no, out. No, I think that we will get out of that through decentralization. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think that they'll they'll appreciate Alaska no, succeeding from the nation. They will. They will. Not. <laughs> I think. They will not. I think they got the best interest up yeah, there. Might be Texas say, that tries it first. Yeah, yeah, but even Texas, I don't think is gonna like they they are dependent upon what do they want to be part of Mexico? Or, you know, yeah, they have their own country. power grids. They have their own power grid, and they fucked that one up. Yeah. No, yeah. they haven't. Yeah, well, so. well, well, almost because I know some guys that are almost. involved in that. Though. Well, they well, it had it, it crashed, it crashes once every couple of years. Snow comes in, they, they you know, old lines need to be repaired. It's a big state, I mean, but it's way more stable than it used to be because well, that's happened. good. Because there, there's a, a shit ton of Bitcoin mining's happening there and it's stabilizing the grid. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's actually because they can they have a huge mine there, they can shut the whole mine off in seconds. And put all dump all the power back into the system. Oh, that sounds great! It See, is great. It's called on demand response. On demand response, and Bitcoin is the perfect way to do it. Yeah, yeah, it's a big world. Bitcoin, the whole the whole Bitcoin is a movement or whatever anybody well, wants to call it. It's its own direct, world. Having direct connected, you know that that is a great idea. It is. You it's know, a great, it is. It's a profound yeah, the innovative action. things they've been doing. You know, like to just set up miners. I mean, you know, you got country. You got really. I mean, we've I've sat through a lot of these. You know, talks. talks and they talk about like, you know, places in Africa. They'll just go stick in, you know, like a like a hydroelectric 
just put it in there mm-hmm. and they take the power and the rest of it goes to the town and we'll take what the, they need. You're yeah. doing that's called gridless in Africa. That's yeah. pretty, it's pretty good. And then cool. suddenly they got access to internet and everything else. Well, and power for the community. That's right. the big thing. Yeah, so really. Bitcoin pays for these uh-huh. hydro mines, hydro facilities to be built. They power Bitcoin with it, but they also bring electricity for the first time to villages in the middle of nowhere. That's cool. It's very, very cool. And that, it's funny because that's you know, like a really, you know, a, and there's no government grant needed to do it. It's no. just economically viable. Yeah, no, that, that's that's a good deed. Mm-hmm. You know, indeed, yeah, it is. That's a good deed. <laughs> very much so. That's yeah, a, and then, and then really it's cool. just in the name of Bitcoin or whatever. So there's like nobody's really taking responsibility, but the coin or it's, it's it a just props it, up, it incentivizes right? good yeah. behavior. Yeah, humans behaving well. Yeah, yeah and nobody's going to want to take the power out at the little village. It's like getting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they see Disney changes the their lives. Self reliance, self reliance, right. self responsibility. All yeah. the things it changes about. their lives. And somebody could con- converse with you know this little village in Africa. That mm-hmm. it still to me amazes me. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah. this, this kid reached out to me from a, yeah. a small African country, Malawi. Yeah. Uh, his name's Grant, and he reached out to me through one of these uh, Bitcoin apps. And I started talking. I was like, "Wow, what what do you got going on?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm trying to help my country out here." And he got yeah. visited by some big time uh, Bitcoiners and stuff. And they're cool. Corner. It's a very poor, very Beautiful country, but uh, some sad from the economic standpoint. It's, no, it's super cool. Changing. Bring like yeah. bring electricity and internet to people that have never had the ability to think. Right. I think right. it's a better place to put it than AI, honestly. Yeah, well, well, AI. I mean, you're gonna have to have a little AI. mini nuclear it reactor is. to run that thing. Well, that's that's well, and that's okay because what that does is incentivizes getting more dense power sources for people on this planet. Which sounds like maybe that's a bad thing, but it's actually not. Those that raising up from just desperate times to being okay is usually just involves power. If you look at the power generation of countries, you can see how much power do they generate. Then you'll, that translates directly how wealthy or how comfortable a life is there. Right. right. Well, yeah. And so if you incentivize more power production where it is, and AI does that to some degree, but Bitcoin does it better, and they'll probably do hand in hand actually. Because they both are going to require so much power. Right, right. Yeah, and it definitely does. Mm-hmm. I've heard that about uh, you know with AI, it's just you got to have enormous amounts of power to run that. It does, and and actually, Guy Swan actually has a lot of information. We sat with him at Bit what, Boom at the picnic table there mm-hmm. with his brother, mm-hmm. and he's done a lot of research into AI and all the stuff. And he says these big models, these big LLMs, they're going to be just not. They're not going to be the thing because it's going to be uh, open source LLMs that are small that are specialized to certain things, and they're cheaper, so that they'll eventually they're going to all the centralization of AI is going to go away. So his belief is that it's going to be smaller and smaller LLMs that do specialized things. That and, feel, open, and open source. Well. I'd feel a lot safer about that, honestly. Yeah, and and that's that's the benevolent path forward with AI, and then there's a dystopian path forward with AI, which is basically it controls everything we do and think. Right. Yeah. And, and if, has, it, if it doesn't, hasn't well, already tapped into And whatever. that's all centralization. The more centralized things are, the more evil they are. Mm-hmm. And the more decentralized they are, the more they are for the people. So, mm-hmm. that. But I, I, you know, I wonder, it's like, I, I totally see that, but I think humanity as a whole, and definitely Americans, got to get to a place of having some, you know, a little bit more maturity in the way we live yes as a whole because well, otherwise you just get yeah you no one's going to be able to take those reins and do much with it you immat- know what I mean? immaturity plays hand in hand with short-term thinking yes it does so the more short-term thinking you have the more immature you're going to be you're childlike right. the more long-term thinking you have the more responsible you're going to be the more self-reliant and the more meritocracy is rewarded so we live in the clown world that's cheap money they print out of thin air for no re- no good reason to send all over the world and that just incentivizes crappy society, essentially. Yeah, it's definitely downgraded from when we were kids. It's getting worse and worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, in terms really, of freedom, intelligence, all kinds of things, or re- actually real choices. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it's kind of like here's a flood of choices. You can't, you don't really have the wherewithal to make any real ones. So you have fifteen different flavors of soda and twenty eight different flavors of juice. There's your choice. Mm-hmm. And Doritos, all the different flavors. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just. There, that's really where your choice exists. Yeah. I got a coin for you. What's it? What's this? The Buffalo uh, native coin. Damn. Silver dollar. Damn. Is that worth a dollar? I don't know. It's, it's a do- open market. I'll have to check that out. Whatever. Is that an ounce? It's an ounce, yeah. 
So that's like thirty bucks. Yeah, thirty bucks. Yeah. That's your point. Oh damn! Yeah. Happy birthday! I wasn't. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I have some money now. Yeah, there it is. Well, that's good. I could use. I'll talk about bitcoins. I'm like, I've got a coin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's you know it, it's it. Everybody's got an opinion about it, but you know it's like. I think because it's, Tom's I think so it's involved cool. in it, I dove I, deep with him because I was. Uh, well, I think it's super cool. It actually, you know, I got to start seeing what's behind it. What's you know what's going on in it. You know, there's not a lot of people involved, but there's enough. And really, it's the involvement is not just in America; it's all over the world. Yeah. You know, so the, the, what's driving the markets is it is it just Americans? No, there's a lot of Asian countries that are deeply into it too. Yeah. There's you know you got El Salvador that's basically backing their whole economy with it. Right, you know, and hopefully, whatever government gets installed next, they see that. Because yeah. you want to help the American people, we'll give them a, a, a an incentive. Here's the incentive you can give them: give them, you know, enough leeway to be able to invest in something that isn't fucking corrupt, right? To where they can see a, a building of well, wealth. There's so many vested interests of the elite. People who do have control of everything, right, it's a, right, you know, yeah, you yeah. Just, the, the don't, don't yeah, world. don't fight city hall. They'll fucking, yeah. you know, shoot you. Or whatever. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, it's it's that old problem, and I don't, you know, as far as I know, it's, it's never not been a problem for humans, at least for the last, you know, thousand years, couple thousand years. You know, there's like, people born here who think they're here to own it and tell everybody else what to do. Well, and there's things you could change in everyone's own personal life, you right, know, and, right. and people are, you know, basically the masters of their own creation, you could, you know, but there's things that you could change that you have a direct influence on. Mm -hmm. And if everybody's trying to change for the better, then ultimately we're we'll all be doing better. But, uh, every individual choice, you know, that's uh, when it gets up into higher levels of government and, protecting interests like money can't buy happiness right, but right. it can't buy a lot of things and right that can just that in itself is also an addiction yeah, yeah. addiction in it you know yeah. people need to to check themselves and, and all, you know walk the middle path like you're saying <laughs> but uh but coming across with bitcoin money and then doing something that you have you know access to help somebody for the first time that's never not expecting it and you know definitely appreciative like that's a that's a good gift mm -hmm. like, like what makes a gift it's like something you you could not or would not buy, but would still enjoy having, mm -hmm. you know, true, true, and like, true. and to give something to somebody you don't necessarily even know and be able to invest, like that's, that's cool. Bitcoin's doing it up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I'm, I'm saying, you no, know, Texas has a horrible power grid. It's like, well, Bitcoin's trying to fix that too. Mm -hmm. You know, and like mm -hmm. that, that's, uh, it's good to see people are doing good in the world, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, there's, you to, it, there's a lot of focus on, you know, it all coming apart, but there's plenty of people on the front lines of, you know, they're, they're trying to build something and maybe they're what builds, what replaces all this. Yeah. You know, I think Bitcoin, you know, that, that community of people, I mean, there's some extremely intelligent people in there, real smart with real big hearts. Yeah. You know, they'll actually interact with you. I mean, to me, it was like, because I used to go to the Grateful Dead a lot. Now, you know, the music was decent enough, you know, a lot of times they were off, but you know, there were some really good nights, but it, that was just the background music to this. You get to interact with people, right? You yeah. get to hear their stories, yeah. right? You get to tell yours. Uh, you get, you know, you hang out with the old heads and you get some wisdom out of them. You know, like maybe how you probably shouldn't take acid every day, <laughs> you know, or how whatever they're giving as yeah. far as their advice. To Don't the young eat the brown heads. acid, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, and there was always, yeah. if there was someone, you know, I've been to concerts where someone's spiraling out. And everybody just stands back and watches and gets wigged out themselves. And I found at the Grateful Dead shows, anybody was spiraling out. There was like 10 helpers there bringing them back down to earth. Yeah. There was always, you know, so it was like this cohesive kind of community. And really, since, you know, that's been gone since 95, really. I mean, you know, there's remnants of it. But yeah. I think Jerry was really the captain. Of, I think he was the shaman of the whole thing, honestly. Yeah. I think he was very had that quality to him that he could actually put a vibe out in that crowd just from his own state of, of presence and just the way he would play because he's playing his heart. It's, you know, it wasn't the greatest guitar players in the world, but you know, that's his melodies are insane. You know, you could just feel them. Right. So I kind of think that he was, but you know, after that, that whole cohesion of that kind of community and yeah, was there problems? There's problems everywhere. I don't really need to focus on that. 
I, the only other place I've ever felt that kind of commonality with people mm -hmm. was at a Bitcoin conferences, <laughs> talking yeah. to those people. That's yeah, cool. and it's weird because it's the same thing as the dead, right? Like, you go to see a Grateful Dead show, it's not just a bunch of hippies. Yeah. There's dudes in suits there. There's old people oh, there. Yeah, there's you walk life. Yeah. There's the, the Bohemians dressed in leather, all wagged out, you know, and then you got, of course, all the hippies and the twirlers. I mean, there's just so many different kinds of people there. Yeah. You know, some guy might be working at a bank, another person might live on the street and and they all just kind of yeah. And then there's the, the wharf rats. Like well, they don't even mm -hmm. do drugs at right, all or right, anything yeah. like sober hippies. Yep, that just yep, enjoy the music. Yep, yep. Every walk of life. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's just this cohesive, classless society. And you go to a Bitcoin conference. No one's asking. No one's comparing how much you have. Well, how much you have. There is none of that. It's just informing each other. You know. And there's a lot of you find that there's a lot of like working together to create some system. And suddenly now you can, you know, shock with it. It's like, oh, shit, mm -hmm. who did that? Well, these people got together and did that. Built a system on top of a system, just like your debit card system, but theirs is their own, and there is no bank tied to it. How fucking amazing is that? Period. You know, there's people actually out there that value their freedom. And that, you know, you don't you don't exercise it. It'll just get taken from you. Right, and Americans have just kind of laid down. It's like, I'm just going to let all these psychopaths just do whatever they want. You know, they, they stop being citizens and start yeah, being it's customers. A, it's a big country. It's a big country. It, yeah. And it's like, even when you hear a politician talk about problems, every time I hear that, it's like, I mean, just look at street after street in Oakland. Just look at street after street in just about any city anywhere. It's like, yeah, there's, how do you even begin to address all this? Because first you got to address mental illness. Because you can do all the cleaning up you want, but if it's if people are running around kind of mentally ill, they're just going to destroy everything again, again and again and again. There's got to be like a, well, and then you, on the far other side of the country, like you know, hurricanes come through and tornadoes and everything else. It's like, mm -hmm. well, these these people have, you know have been torn off in hurricanes, but they're still mentally ill in Oakland. Just because the weather's nice doesn't mean that right they got their shit together. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know, and that chaos just starts spilling over. You know, and it's like, well, how did we get, because I never, I, I don't, you know, I'm sure when I was young, there were times, but I don't get too far away from self-modulation. I don't let myself go. I just don't, you know, and it's, it, it's, it's a disciplinary thing because anybody's capable of flying off the handle. You make one wrong decision, your whole life can go sideways. I already know that. I'm not one of those people who think, oh, you know, because I've learned some things, that I'm somehow safe in this world. No, no. You're still very subject to a lot of shit and a lot of things can railroad you even still. I mean, there's no, I don't think there's any level of attainment while you're still in a body where you're not going to get hit by your environment. You're going to get hit by it. You know, and being able to like not make poor choices that lead, you know, not get desperate to understand that, you know, I've, I've always figured, you know, the best marker for happiness if you really want to test it out on yourself, take away everything that you use that makes you think you're happy. Just take it all away and just be there. Are you happy or not? Right. Like it's not about what you do and what you have. It's your state of being. Are you in that place or not? Right. Because if you are, okay, now you, you can navigate the world a little differently. Right. right. Is it going to go your way? No. But if you're happy and truly happy, you don't need it to go your way. You just need it to go partially your way. That's all. It can go someone else's way for a while, your way for a while. It could go his way for a while, their way for a while, and you're cool with it. Yeah. You know, it keeps it keeps all that mental illness out. It's when you it's when people I think mental illness really sets in when you believe your own bullshit. Well, and we, we we're to the point in society to like there are mentally, you know, ill people, you know, throughout the world, sure. big cities everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, at the, there's also so much automation, you know, AI and, and Bitcoin operations. And But we make enough food to feed the world. There, and there should be some kind that most states, uh, you know, do have some kind of, you know, you know food stamps or whatever, right. Section 8 housing, if you choose to, choose to go down, whatever you can do. Well, there are programs, but... You know, having that mental little person, like someone to make him eat every day, like this, he's his own keeper, you know, mm -hmm. and that self-modulation, like, you know, and you don't know if that person's mentally ill or if they're hooked on 
drugs or, or mm-hmm. you know, if they're like literally had gotten kicked out of their home and evicted, uh, right. you know, with their three kids of like whatever, you know, poor single mother or whatever kind of thing. You don't know who people, everybody has their own story. And there's so many people on this planet. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. And, eight, uh, eight billion different realities, right? Yeah. And, uh, and you never know where people come from. So no. it still amazes me that we could all converse. You know, it's, sometimes. sometimes. But, yeah. I mean, I have a. For the most part. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I mean, there's been time, you know, yeah. as of recently, it's been a lot more work. You know, mm-hmm. someone will look at you and they'll just go to engage them. And it's like, am I speaking Klingon to you? Oh, yeah, I get it all the time at job sites. Like, well, well, you know, well. and people help me, like, you know, different people oh, yeah. help me. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, I had my little brother, you know, you know working with me. And was, we were doing projects in Southern California. And, and uh, so, you know, I have him come up from San Diego to LA to the forest outside. And I'd say, can you pass me or go get me a some skill saw or whatever? And, and you know he brings me back to the wrong song. I like, no, it's the other one that looks like this. And then he brings back a different one that's like a drill. It's like, no, you didn't. You didn't listen to anything because the drill, the drill spins. You know, <laughs> like, right, right, right. Doesn't have a blade. Oh on no, it. no. Yeah. We're building, we're building a scaffolding on the side of this building for Miss Angela. And I'm like, yeah, can you pass me a, a crescent wrench to tighten down one of these bolts? And he takes it and he fucking overhand chucks it at me. I'm like, whoa! You don't nearly hit somebody on the, the you know, on the, on the ladder. And like, I dodge it, then it fucking hits something. I mean, it hits somebody down there. It's like, oh, everybody okay? Because this thing's like a fucking monkey wrench. Yeah, yeah. Screw <laughs> and uh, but you know, but he he definitely did send me the right tool that time. <laughs> <laughs> so there is some level of success. <laughs> some level of success. You know, the guy. Right, next time we go like this, you know, and uh, and it's you know. It was my fault for not, you know, teaching him properly. And it's like, but, you know, but, uh, but no, there was, there was progress. Learning has taken place, right? You're yeah. infinitely yeah. patient, I find, yeah. on the job site. The, yeah, I mean, it, the cognitive capacity yeah. is really tested on a job site, yeah. especially when you're doing something other than just digging a hole. Yeah. Anybody can dig a hole, but can, you know, there's a lot, I've, I've met a lot of people who, you know, can do some good work. They just can't finish it. Yeah. There's there's something always unfinished. It's yeah. like how well, come you I, can't see? I totally have the shoe cobbler's kid syndrome, but that's at my own house. Like I, yeah. one yeah. of my windows isn't going to have finished trim until I put finished trim on there. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, that's what but say, every right? every other client, you know, like they, yeah, well, it should be finished trim. And then, but then once again, I there's still a window with no trim on the on the mold. That's like. Mm-hmm. But you well, said it that, was, that is going to get trimmed before I leave, you know, okay. to talk about finishing things. I should have stayed and finished the trim. Well, well you, you said it's like the cobbler who, his the kids shoe, don't have any shoes. Yeah, the shoe cobbler's kids. Yeah, they're running around barefoot. He's, <laughs> he's so busy building everybody else's kids' shoes. Right, right, right. right. Like the, yep. yeah. They say a maid lives in a dirt, in a dirty place. Yeah. The carpenter chef, lives in a shack. Chef Boyardee, because he comes home, he uses the microwave, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. The hitchhiking mechanic. Luckily, most mechanics do have working vehicles. Yeah, yeah. It's but, funny because, like, in you know, like, you go to the jungle and you have like a maestro. Yeah. That's the only guy that doesn't get any peace because everybody's asking him. Everybody's seeing him. They go home and have their peace. Yeah. When they go home, someone else shows up. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of like, yeah, they they teach peace and have none. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like the carpenter, you know. Yeah. He lives in an unfinished house, and everybody else's is beautiful. I I will get there one day. <laughs> you know, it's like. The, one I can day. see you, yeah. boom, boom, and you're yeah. just done. <laughs> done, yeah. Well, yeah, possibly we'll see. There's also it's like the the curse of being a homeowner. You know, there, there's always another project. You know, well, yeah. And which one takes priority and precedence over the other? You know, which one decides to cut the line because you're like, oh, well, I create most priority. I am the water line. The but, sh- yeah, the oh, shit well. don't do itself. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, you know, this big of a piece, you know, expanding again, mm-hmm. you know, adding another 50 at some point. It, it's a lot of work. Just yeah. getting, you know, keeping the roads maintained. Well, yeah, if you guys come up there and help me finish my projects, then I can come down here and help you guys do we'll, another one of your projects. We'll go for you and we'll be the client. And it'll be for your house, but we'll pretend like we're the client. So you have to serve us to finish your house. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey, do cool. a little reverse psychology. I've got a barbecue. I've got a sauna. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah. little a sauna. Uh, yeah. yeah we're gonna, we, we should throw one of those up real quick over the next few weeks. Oh, yeah. yeah. I we're agree. We just have to pick out where it goes. No, we have a spot. We have a foundation already laid out and everything. Yeah. It's, yeah. And I think uh, I'm, I'm really, I mean, the, the high idea of getting any concrete work done or 
you know, dirt work done before everything freezes. You guys still have winter coming. Like, yeah. Once the ground freezes, it's a, like up in Alaska, it's so saturated, it turns into an ice chunk, and then the, the frost goes further and further south. Yeah, we have till about December. Yeah. Before it's really frozen. It's frozen yeah. 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 You can dig. We're all moving stuff right around. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking to see that whole pile of dirt disappear. Yeah, that'll be yeah. for all morning. Yeah. yeah, and then what do we pick the, the logs off for the fire? A couple of those all, a couple of root balls or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Bury it. Yeah. Just throw it in there. Yeah, yeah I got some. I got it's some. organic compost. It's not, yeah. It'll, okay. yeah. it'll it's eventually what, disintegrate. We're, uh, you know, we should, always did the trash should do is get, like, get one board whole, that's like burnt. We'll burn it, like, you know, and we'll, we sign their name on it. We'll sand it down, bury it, and see how long it Dig it up in five years. Oh, a time or capsule. Time capsule. Yeah. Hey, hey, a five-year time capsule. Yeah, yeah I mean, I don't know. after the after the apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Isaac, you uh, you had yeah. something you wanted you wanted to talk about? Um, uh, Carlos books. We're jumping. We're jumping. Uh, yeah, we're I'm a little sleepy, but sleepy, All right. sleepy. Uh, Spit out. So yeah, I started reading the journey to Ixalan, just had to fill to pull it off the shelf. Uh-huh. And in there he's talking about, you know, because sometimes I could fall into these like pity Eeyore moods. Indulgence. Yeah, just in just bad moods. Mm-hmm. Indulging. Yeah. Uh but one of the things he says is like how pathetic those are to drop into like Don Juan in the book, he says this. How pathetic it is to drop into those moods because your death is always like standing right to your left about an arm chair's length away. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I started paying attention. I noticed like all the times that I've, I've had quite a few like close to death moments in my sure life. You have, yes, you have <laughs> been there for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's weird after those, you feel way alive and there, those kind of moods can't even enter into your consciousness because you're just, so alive but then yes. what happens though in the everyday life you kind of fall into the like you something happens where you can allow yourself to fall into that mood mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so how do you then remind yourself or like take the seriousness of your death if that makes sense because if, if you we forget that it's just sitting there to our left side. You know what I mean? So we can fall into pathetic behaviors. Right. I don't know. I just was like that. This sounds like the wrong word to say, but like summoning your death, the mm-hmm. presence of your death. People, Not, get, people get really, Oh, that's so bad. I know. That's why it sounds weird, but yeah. because you know, it, it, the thing that's going to take you requires your courage. What we call death, it requires courage, right? So when it sees you sitting there, like going through something, which is really not that. It's just a fog in your head. Yeah. It's not real. It's like you you don't even have courage in your own imagination. Yeah. You're going to have to have – it's almost like it, – it, to me, it's almost like death looks at you as – you're fucking better than this. You know better than this. You know better than this. It's to me, that's the voice that talks to you when you're in those letting yourself go down and you're not really in a mood to bring yourself back up and feel alive in the presence of all those things. Right. Yeah. It, 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 you have to be able to hear that voice going, you're better than this. You've got more strength. Than this. You're taking this far too seriously. You're, you're just indulging in self-importance. You're indulging, you, you know, it, I, that's what I hear. I'm not saying you. Yeah. Just saying what I hear is, you know, you're indulging in self-importance. And that makes you very critical of everything around, which is a kind of a heavy place to be critical. Well, right. I, I think that uh, we were talking about the energy flow of people earlier. And, you know, the, there's a thin line of, of you know, helping someone or possibly enabling them to be someone they, they don't want to be. You know, it's like to give them the helping hand up. And, or, you know, or to have to, you're, you're, you're making or solidifying the neural pathways of always needing hand up, you know, but at the same rate, it's good to be kind and help people, you know, to sometimes all that's all people need is just a, a hand and step in the right direction. 
you know, we all get to points in life where we're going to need, you know, help from a friend, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, it, once you get to a point where you're, you're in a mindful meditative state and conscious and where your own, what you could be doing to benefit yourself or the, the, all of those around you, you know, and, and what, what kind of goal do you have? And, and there is time to take back, you know, and, and sit back and veg out and watch a movie or whatever, but, but uh, to help somebody or, or be able to help yourself, once you get to that higher portion of, of being able to consciously build your own energy, you'll have energy to, to hand out to other people to help other people up around you. And, they, they, and helping me help you help everyone, you know, everybody gets stronger. And uh, and just if you're in the Eeyore state, like, for me, pity me, the world always fucking dumps on my shoulder. You know, it's like, well, that's, that is going to ultimately bring that to your doorstep. You know, so yeah, your thoughts well aligned. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and well, and then the there's a magnetism. To yeah, it. yeah, and the universe will provide. Mm -hmm. Be careful what you ask for. I was like, I went to go check on this vehicle the other day, and I was like, oh, hopefully it's like fix you up or you know get a decent deal. And it's like, careful, you had to push it into that's, <laughs> you that's had to push more, it back into its it parking rubber. spot. Yeah, yeah the rebuild. Test <laughs> yeah, and the ultimate fixer upper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was. Um, you yeah. have to tear that down to the frame and start all over. Right, but if it's four-wheel drive and it's got like walk around inside of it, I mean, I get it. I get yeah, it. We'll, we'll see how we'll see how Just that all find goes. somebody who's very passionate about automobiles. Well, I have him. I'm, I'm almost I'm willing to you know mail him in. You know, like, mail him in. <laughs> Come on, get in the box, bro. <laughs> Come on, Just ship your ass. Well, overnight. well, he's a funny thing is my mechanic is also um, my dog trainer, mm -hmm. and uh, so he's the one that signed off my my documents for my pups. Oh, nice. And uh, so he's been a man of many hats. Nice. But yeah, he came down to Arizona and helped me on a project. He helped me on one in Washington. And you know, you need vehicles wherever you're at. And uh -huh. and so he, did, you know, and if and sometimes you also need another guy. Sometimes I don't need to have five guys. I just need four or three or right. whatever. Mm -hmm. And but when you need that fifth or sixth guy, he's like, "Hey, you're no longer a mechanic. Change your hat." <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, nice, nice. But um, somebody could move. But yeah, we'll we'll see. I don't if I don't even buy it. So, you know. We'll see if you can see what happens. Yeah, manifest yeah, the yeah. title. Manifest yeah. the title. Talk yeah. to the wife. Be like, listen, honey, we'll get 500 bucks if you scrap it. We give it to that kid. We'll get 1500 so, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's a hard world out there. Yeah, yeah but like, manif you know, manifestation, really, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, really, that's, you know, I'm very and, few uh, people are going to look at that. And, right. You know, walk away. It's got too many problems. Well, the, but then uh, if we were to build like a, a – concrete pad or whatever that was the next plan we're just going to build an auto re repair shop here in higher coal <laughs> yeah so that's I, you know i thought about that just build a garage two bays uh -huh. have a lift maybe yeah. two yeah and then outfit it uh -huh. have him come in and and do a split he takes 70 percent. we take 30 and free maintenance on all of our cars the 30 percent to pay back you know to eventually oh of our neighbor you think maybe? Cole, yeah. Yeah, yeah cole's a hell yeah, of a mechanic yeah. He's, he's got a lot of cars down there. Yeah. You might even go look. He's got... I doubt he has something I can walk uh, around But there's in something, there's something down he's there. He's got a shuttle bus down there, but it's not quite what you need. He has yeah, this European four-cylinder... I want to think... I think it is four-wheel drive. But it's one of those European cargo haulers. Cool. Well, right? I mean, so I want to look at it. I'm not going to say no to anything. <laughs> you know, I want to say, yeah, you know... I'm, you know, Cole's got a whole car lot down there. Yeah, well, is it in kilometers then? It's European... Yeah. It's, I'll get, I'm really good at math. I'll just get quick on the conversions. Yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but officer, I was only going 130. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. So with you, like, okay, so you go into those depressing states, right? Yeah, it could be a number of things. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, do, you, do you understand your thinking about what you don't have in those moments? Right, like there's maybe experiences you want to have that you're because I mean living in the mountains kind of see for us we're in our fifties the world that is out there we've tasted it it's bitter and sweet and we know how bitter and sweet it is but you can't just go tell someone it's bitter sweet and say you, you shouldn't go into it you got to go into it like what Carlos told me he's like Cristobal you're gonna have to live your life because you know I want to be oh I want to sit on this pedestal of high mindedness. Of this brilliant, you know, elevation of my assemblage point, a, a massive shift 
to where you stay in this enlightened state, it's like, no, Christ, the you'll have to live your life. Some things just come with age, right? And I mean, the thing that I think is the most difficult for me up here when I think about you guys is you're young, right? And there's not young women running around here. Well, you know, there's a couple, but you know, and it, it, it's we're, I, it's not really in our wheelhouse. I mean, it's not in mine. I, you know, me and Tom, I, I know him. He knows me pretty well. Just it, we're doing different things, but it's because we're also you know twenty some years older, mm-hmm. right? And and really, I mean, if everybody could just realize that your values change, they're not going to stay the same. They just aren't, right? And if you're trying to solidify a value, you, you know, you got to see the world. You got to see things. You got to get yourself in trouble to understand what even has value. I don't mean like dangerous trouble, but in a fix. You know, because what I find is what keeps depression at bay for me is the world's in a fix. So you're kind of have opportunity to be in a fix at all times. But that calls for you to be on your toes. You ain't got time to go there. Right. And I think that's one of the things death also says to you. If it's the advisor, you don't have much time. Why are you spending it just sitting there imagining the worst things and just bringing yourself down? Why are you doing that? Right. And right. And, you know, it's like when having a friend is someone who isn't going to let you just walk away. You have to answer the question. Right. Death don't do that to you. Eventually, you'll stop hearing it. If you choose to put yourself in a rut, the, the voice of, of balance, the voice of connection, you'll stop hearing it. And then you'll just be left to your own devices. And I think we go through that a lot in life. I've, I've felt very disconnected from being alive and well-being and present so many times. Three months later, it like, come to. It's like, what the, where the fuck have I been? I mean, it's hard to explain because you're there. You're operating. But there's just that quality that makes life so rich and wonderful. Mm-hmm. You can't marginalize that. Right? And that mood marginalizes the beauty of being alive and succumbs to this, the despair of life because there's going to be both. And anybody who thinks you're going to avoid despair, think again, motherfucker. Think again. You may have had a lot of lucky spins in roulette, you know, but sorry, that shit's coming down at some point. You're going you're gonna to put your eggs in a basket that has a hole in it. It's just going to happen. There's just no way around it. Right. And I think it's those moments that actually show you what discipline is as a human being experiencing something. Because that's where the discipline belongs. Your soul doesn't need it. You do. We do. As beings walking on earth, we need it badly. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's is a discipline. That's one way of putting it. It's 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 again, it's calibration. It's modulation. It's understanding the in-breath and the out-breath. It's understanding that when you go to mix energies together, don't burn your brain out doing it. That if you're going to contemplate the darker things, the things that bring you down, make sure you're in a strong position to do so. Don't just succumb. Right? I mean, that's, you know, look how many times Carlos was told, you God, you're such an indulger. He would just be scared and, you know, we're in the society we're in now, don't you, you, you can't dare, like, push somebody a little bit. No, they don't like that. But, you know, Carlos was pushed by Don Juan fucking regularly for being a little bitch. I mean, that's basically what he's saying. Yeah. Carlos, stop being a bitch. Carlos, stop being a bitch. Carlos, stop being a bitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Really, that's over and over and over again. I think the thing that, you know, people reading those books, they miss, because they're all in the high-mindedness of all of it, right? into the shifting of the assemblage point, being able to like see a landscape, you know, just blossom out of something else, you know. Tiny the hoarfrost, man. That's super wants. fucking cool. Yeah, staring yeah. at the hoarfrost. Yeah. yeah. It's like, ooh, Winter Wonderland. Where are my elf shoes? <laughs> right. Do you know what they miss? Yeah. How often he was sick. How often right. he was terrified. How often he felt inadequate. How often he was depressed. How often he was just beside himself with confusion. It's running through all of them. It's, con- it's the one consistent thing through all of his books, the fucking mess he's in, right? And it, to be able to, to 
read through those books from that perspective. Look for the pain. Don't look for all the high-minded shit. That comes with well-being. It just comes with courage and well-being. It's not like you do anything. You're just open for it. You're noticing things of a more magical nature. But you're going to have to do something about this staring at the ground shit first. Right? So how do you get to the magical states that they write about in there that Carlos is conveying to you? You get over the fucking dumb shit first. Right? And in getting over the dumb shit, you rescue the energy to be able to have energy in a, in a powerful state suspends time. It gives you a window where you don't have anything else to do other than contemplate what's right in front of you. Do you understand what I mean? Okay. So it, it allows you to have control of time, if that makes any sense. Because the, if you give it to the mind, the mind's going to have you so busy and so distracted, you won't ever stop to see the other side of this despair. Right? You'll just be in it. You'll just be in it. And then work, you're just doing that. Now you're just doing this. And now you're just doing that. And, you know, it, it's, it takes a lot to, to learn how to bring well-being to what you're doing, to bring humor and fun and laughter. Yeah, and also I think... And that, do a good job at the same time. Yeah, when the, the neural pathways, like in your brain, they the ones you use the most become solidified. Mm -hmm. So if you're using the pity, poor me, you're, and you're solidifying it, so you have to slowly reprogram your neural pathways to where you're, you know, it's having gratitude and appreciation for all the, the beauty in life that, that is there, you know? It, like... You have whatever the, the old proverb you have two uh, wolves come to the, the door. It's like the white wolf or the black wolf or whatever. It's like, which one you know, which feed. one do you feed or whatever, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Don, you know, and Don Juan even explains it in the books. Is It's kind of like your energy has created a channel, right? Like actually like water eroding, making a fucking arroyo. Yeah. Like Manifest destiny. Of right? And, what is, and water is like energy. It seeks the path of least resistance or no resistance. So if you don't resist it going into this habitual downward spiral, it just goes there. So what does he say? You have to stand there and you have to consciously with will, with intent, right? With awareness, with well-being, as much as you can muster, redirect that energy into other neural pathways. You have to actually be the one that stands there and redirects that energy somewhere else. You know, so for some, it's learning guitar. And, and to me, I find that you'll really know when you're on the right path because you just want to learn. You don't have time to be all negative about not knowing because you're too busy learning. Right. And understand that it brings it, you know, and the energy brings in the patience. You'll, you'll be good at this one day, but to expect to be good at it, at, at living a life, just being awake in it for a couple of years, you know, you know what you're fucking doing. You know, it's like a lot of people I knew that were, you know, enlightened beings. They're selling real estate. now. They went back into the world. It's like it because it requires. I mean, there's if you're going to hold well-being that requires so much responsibility. That most people just don't have it in them to, to do that. And I will say it's probably most they would rather be led around. By their emotions, by their thoughts, by their environment, by their friends, by their job, by their whatever. To take the reins yourself, it's you against the world. It's also you with the world. The world needs what you're bringing, right? But you have to clear out the debris of bringing it in a way that kind of shuts off the possibility of a communication. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, so there's got to, that's where I say you got to have skin in the game. There is nobody who's – there's no little birdie from heaven that comes down, right, and, and does a golden shit on your head and gives you a halo. There is no savior coming to do anything. Well, wait, 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 well that's not what they told me. No, I know. Well, I didn't sign I up for this. Yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, and we all signed up for this. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> what the savior actually is is completely understanding what evolutionary pressure is. And not turning that into despair, not turning that into stress, not turning that into confusion, and not letting it boil over in you so much that your cognitive capacity has now been rendered useless. Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, right? different times, different times in my life, I thought I've hit rock bottom. I'm like, wow, this is as low as you can possibly get. Yeah. And then somehow I managed to top it. I'm like, oh, well, why was I in such a bad mood back? I mean, I'm not can't be in a bad mood now either. I hit rock bottom and climbed out of this hole, you know. And once you once you know you could you can climb out of the hole and we can continue to be you know, prosperous and, and for the universe. It's like, Keep climbing. Yeah. And you the more it. and the more you help people around you, the more the universe comes to help you and aid you in, in your goals. You yeah. know. And I think you're doing great. So you want to rise from the ashes. You yeah. gotta to go to ashes. Yeah. Right? And that's not I mean it's I think ultimately it is what humans are intended to do. I just don't think there's that many people interested in it. Not for real. Also, I think that, that we're talking about happiness earlier. What you know, what truly makes happiness would sorrow and, and pity and and remorse, you know, unless you have genuine feelings of having felt those before, then you couldn't actually know what true happiness would would even feel like. So you, you can't have the rain without the rainbow or you can't have sunshine sunshiny day without having a blizzard or whatever. So, I call it the infinite pebble of sadness. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. always rolling around in the palm of your hand. Because, you know, there's your time's up at some point. So there's going to be sadness. There's just no way to ignore that. And honestly, I think sadness is the better door to go through. Like into infinity, I would rather go through the door of sadness than the one of manic happiness. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's it's a little bit deeper of a feeling. Yeah. I think it'll take you beyond the, the habit trail of coming back here and doing the shit all over again. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 I don't want to do that. I mean, you know, it's like when you die, they say you see the light. And my advice to people is when you see that light, turn around. Just turn around. You'll see the entire universe, and then you can check whether you got the courage to go do that on your own or go through this recycling fucking tube of light, right, it's to where you're guided through life once again. Yeah, you know, I think there's a lot of reality in that. That the ones that break free are the ones that turn around, face the face the universe, and travel that as a conscious entity. Doesn't necessarily, you know, whatever form it's in. I mean, you'd be a gas cloud. If it's conscious, it's living, it's experiencing, it, you know, on a level that, no, maybe we don't have any understanding of, you know, it's like life in another dimension. I don't think anybody really understands what that is. I mean, I don't even think I do. I know that when it's, when you hit those spots, there's like, it's weird. It's like from who you are here, that feels like perfection. It feels like it, it's weird. It's like, is it perfect? It's just right for you. So yeah. But it's not like it's – you can't bring that down here. Well, you have to evolve to a place yeah. where you're actually breathing that air, right? And I think, you know, a lot of people just aren't interested in that. That the I think, you know, the old people, you know, all those old temples and stuff, way, way old stuff. I think they were probably – they had nothing else really to do. So I think they were actually probably far more – for lack of a better terminology, spiritually connected than we could even begin to understand. Way deeper than we can understand. That we can even actually understand. Right? We're making all kinds of uh, where the veils of ideas about what all that is. Yeah, we veils, have no idea. Yeah, the veils of communication falter right. in describing the you know. Well, right. Like uh, we went to Machu Picchu. Yeah. Everybody's walking around. You're, you're checking it out. And, you know, and I was kind of checking it out on a different level in a way. There was all these you know, walls, you know, just niches. Kind of niches. These little thing? niches carved into the wall. And it's like I could hear like something telling me, go mm, go do that in that niche. So I did, close my eyes. And the more I would do it, it was like the niche turned into a window. I was looking into some other dimension. It was wild. See a sky, a whole world out there. Mm -hmm. Right? And then I kind of got this vision that Wow, it's like all, there's all these niches. And I could imagine, and I was imagining it. I'm not saying this is what they did, but I had this vision, this imagination of, oh, their ceremonies would basically be everybody goes in a niche. They all vibrate into that with whatever that vibratory voice of theirs is. And it harmonizes. And then that world drops in around them. It's like they can actually call it to that place, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So everybody gets in a niche. He goes, the whole place starts to vibrate, right? Right, and then suddenly your whole landscape changes into something else. And suddenly there's spirits sitting around you, 
Like, oh my God, these things are real. Because, you know, peering through that window, you see, you can see people in there. It's like, this is bizarre. You know, and I, it, it, you know, I'm, it, of course, there's, you know, the, the, the whole faction side. What were you smoking? It's like, you don't have to. You don't have to do anything. You just go and make some noise. And it, it opens up. And it was interesting because I was walking doing that. One of the tour guides comes up and looks at me and says, how do you know how to do that? I'm like, what? He's like, that's, and he actually had said, that's what they think that those were for. Because they had, they would have people go and stand in there and not make, just hum in there. And I would come in and do it, like at a deeper, more resonant level. And all the whole walls would start going. And we had like 20 people all lined up doing that. And the vibe was incredible. It really was. I mean, everybody was into it. There was like a cohesion that is not normal. Yeah. Like a magical event could happen. Yeah. Just by embracing. Well, it sounds like a magical event did happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I always have found, you know, I'm always open to that. Yeah, my uh, my first night up on the, the mountain here, I I had like a conscious dream, you know, so I'm sleeping and, and I, you know, I love the, the, when this dream comes back. And you never know when it will, but the, I'm flying around, you know, and, and I'm just flying around. To, hey, check this out. And I'm like teaching little kids, hey, you can fly too, you know. And, like, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then I'm like, but then it gets to the point where I, I wake up at the middle of the night and like, you know, I go pee or whatever, and I go back to bed, and I fall back into the same dream. But this time, I know I'm dreaming. Some at this point, I'm like, oh, we're gonna cruise over here, and cruise over there, and, and you know, I'm like I'm flying all around. And I, hmm. I mean, that in itself just it's like a good omen. It's like, oh, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. You know, yeah. do what you do, fly, little birdie. You know, and uh, so I, and then we're up there, and uh, we're we're kind of going over a game plan of what needs to be done first, and we're gonna start on this end to try to, you know. Hmm. And I have a couple things to make it you know, ever so nice. And and what do I see in the the um, box of screws? Like a little marble. Like, hey, look at this little marble here. You know. And he's like, he's like, I'm like, I collect marbles. And he's like, oh, you could have that one. I'm like, cool. So uh, we're going down to put the first couple pieces on. And you know, you bend over, and sometimes things fall out of your pocket and whatever. So he's like, hey, you dropped a marble. And I'm like, oh man, how did it fall out of that pocket? And I, and I as I'm bending over to pick that one up. It was number two. I see a third one. I'm like, now nah, there's three marbles. Oh, omens <laughs> upon omens upon omens. I'm exactly where the universe, you know, says I should be. But you know, am I crazy for thinking that uh, finding a marble and and the dirt is is good luck? If you need consensus, yeah, yeah, I think I'd, <laughs> right. I mean, go for it. You know, <laughs> yeah. It's but, uh, interesting. I find yeah. that those experiences are so real for you. You don't need anyone's consensus. No, no. You don't I, need anyone to agree with no, you that a, you're it's, saying it's a good omen. <laughs> yeah, and uh, but then I. I'm reminded, careful what you asked for, because I found the truck to be exactly what I wanted and a fixer-upper to the extent where I'm going to have to import a mechanic. <laughs> yep. Beep, but beep, no, beep. Oh, you know, that might not be the right option. You know, mm -hmm. never never take a step down a path until you know which direction you want to go. And I do. I'm interested in seeing this European vehicle. It's cool. Um, and if not, just talking to him out. about, you know, yeah. What he thinks about the whole he'll line. talk cars for hours. With you. That's cool. Well, I'll have to, I'll have to, you know. There are those guys. He's and, he's cars. He's just cars. 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 cars, 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 cars. Every cool. Well, I'll hit him with a carpenter. Mm -hmm. I'm a carpenter. Let me show you some pictures. You can show me pictures from yeah. how a body. Yeah, you could spend all day doing. Well, I mean, sure. and, and uh, that's the thing is bring bring the vehicle to the the master mechanic who wants to talk nothing about cars. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll trust that man's opinion, mm -hmm. and. uh and then, you know, we all bring something to the table, whatever it might be. Yeah. And, yeah. There's a lot of masters in the world, yeah. really. I mean, you know, yeah. if, if you're looking, you know, you're a master carpenter. We know a master chiropractor. Yeah. We yeah. need to get them together because he's got a back that needs a master He'll be here on the second. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I got it. He can almost reach oh, all the way up. Yeah. More you know, so he'll get that one. Yeah, this is the one. Out. That's, yeah. At least to let you know what's going on with it. Yeah. If it's yeah, not something. something in there. Oh. Yeah, you may, you know, you may have damaged your rotator cuff. That's... Hands above your head. I mean, that's yeah. But I, I do. You know, to not know how you did it. That's a, a brutal part. Well, it's yeah. it's along all those. Houses. Yeah, long. Yeah. How many, how many times time have you been doing this? Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 We'll we'll see what the doctor says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll. I mean, he'll get in there more than anyone else will. Yeah. I mean, he really is. Yeah. He's no, mad. exactly. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. It's so. I find that you know, there's. People in the world that bring presence to what they do, 
mm-hmm. and it makes it stupendous. It's kind of like, you know, the, if the common person would understand it as the athlete in the zone. Well, there's also a certain amount of PT. I mean, I have to be able to continue to stretch and try to do motions I sure, sure. don't feel comfortable in. Sure. You know, yoga is just good. Knowing you're overdoing Pretzel it. Pretzel twisting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretzel twisting. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, let's just call it Eastern influence stretching. Yeah. Because yoga is a whole different thing. We, they call it yoga, but it's not really. Yeah. Yoga. I'm all about it. Yeah. yeah. Yoga is action. That's all it is. It's, it's, oh, there's a cosmic stew and it is manifesting and you're in it. Mm-hmm. That's karma. You're in it. There's yeah. actions. There's, you know. Well, yeah, stretching is, is good. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. You know, downward, downward dog and all that. It's like, yeah, dude, ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dom Juan stresses as you know. You have to. You should stretch every night and every morning. And now I understand why. Yeah, no, it's good to keep everything. Get thrown working. out of your bed from leg cramps. Yeah, you can get up and stretch. <laughs> You're gonna have to. You know, age does something to you. It lets you know that oh, geez, you might make better choices. Just well, the universe has a way of slowing you down. Starting to learn yes. that one. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Me and Angela both have knees that are not feeling great right now. Right. And- I just almost got a Charlie horse walk into the house. It's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> we need to get back in the gym and work out. Because the, the workout like, how do you stay like... smiling with all this ailment? <laughs> mm-hmm. But that's it. Old age is an enemy. If it, Don't let it stop you. The aches and the pains. I find that, you know, you, the best thing you can do is get up and do something. Yeah, absolutely. That keeps you kind of fluid a little bit. But then, you know, you got to. Yeah. Kind of really, you know, as you get older, it's suddenly, you know, nutrition is a very important thing. It's you know, very if, important. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta kind of stay hydrated, so to speak. You know, because when you're young, you know, all that or stuff's... you have to sweat it all out. When are we building a sauna? Or go down to the jungle and sit in a dieta for a month. I'll show you the lay of the land of the sauna. Yeah, so you guys already have a plan. Yeah, so where, where are you playing? We already we dug out a, uh, over in the area that's a hot tub and stuff that doesn't work yet. Mm-hmm. There's, we dug out a square for the sauna right there. We, we, we dug down the granite and we got grapple on top of it. Oh, so we're talking about we're talking about building a cedar sweat lodge. Yeah, well, this I'm, is, thinking, this I'm thinking. I'm thinking, I'm saying I'm thinking is, both. Oh, you no, need oh, to have, do both. Oh. Well, I should just make drawings on how, what everything looks like. We we'll go take measurements, make drawings, like and once we have drawings, we'll go ahead and get materials list, and huh? we'll oh, have the materials set. And uh, we can and then we'll later. have to order. We'll have ordering lists of materials and, and then order of importance and application <laughs> check-in. He's got to go home for Thanksgiving, so we have to yeah. do. There's a lot to do. We get. It's... You see how much we get done in a day. Quite a bit. Yeah. 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 It's actually quite tomorrow. astounding. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to move that mountain. I'm moving that mountain tomorrow morning. See, we move mountains. That's what we do. <laughs> with the help of a skid steer. Hey, hey. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah, right tool is the job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. This has been, the, we have been extremely busy this summer, just working, working, working. You know, sometimes you just gotta take a break from what you're doing. You, know, you just gotta, you know. I found that you know, it's you have to refresh, and if you don't, you're not doing it right. If you just, you know, I've done the day, the years where you just go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah, I'm not into that anymore. It's like I'm taking the, some time. At, yeah, at the end of the day, it's like time is the most value, you know, valuable asset you have, yes, and. Indeed. Like you say that's at your sitting to your left side, not you, but everybody you know, right around your shoulder. You know, you never know what it might pop. So the time you have is really the most valuable asset, and mm-hmm. to you know be creative and do you know good for the community is all but, you know self care and, and you know learn. That all, learn, 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 yeah, understand what evolutionary pressure is because mm-hmm. I think it's if it's mismanaged or misunderstood that turns into chaos. Conscious evolution of humankind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a pressure to it, yeah. you know. It's, there's you're gonna get squeezed, you know. It's like I, you know, I've always wondered: Are you gonna be able to handle all these squeezes? Because there's times where you're getting squeezed so hard that you could actually like see where you might pop. You don't, you know. You get to where within the stand there, you're just like. Wow, it just goes any further. This could be a hard thing to, well, every, to resist. And Holy shit. You know, I've seen people squint, uh, uh, squeeze the sponge, you know, and, and so all the water drips out. And then, and then you let it you let it soak back up. But even if a sponge has a porosity rate, it only holds so much water. Right. And at some point, you need to be able to, to digest that and squeeze the sponge again. Otherwise, you're never going to get any more yeah. So it's juice. Yeah, juice. <laughs> juice it. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm being juiced. 
<laughs> I love just, just, just twisted and juiced. You know, juices Vitamix. are great. Yeah. Ju- <laughs> ju- juices are cool. You know, I'd love carrot juice. It's like one of my favorite. But then I you got to clean the thing, and it's like, gee, that's down in the jungle. I have had nights where I feel like someone has grabbed me by the feet. Someone's grabbing me by the head, bringing me out like a towel. It's like, wow, this is so uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, and uh, probably put yourself into a couple of different yoga poses. Yeah. Twist yourself around yeah, a bit. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You end up like puking on yourself and stepping in a bucket, and you're wondering where the damn door is. You can't okay. don't know where the hell you are. I've had that happen a few times. Yeah, not a lot. Just those, you know, you can get pretty discombobulated. Mm-hmm. But you know, I find that it's a pretty. It can be a heavy ordeal. A lot of things can. It's just those are to me. It's like I have learned from all of them. Mm-hmm. Everything that has caused me pain, despair, suffering, depression, I treated them as teachers right and sometimes their their teaching is you're a fucking dumbass and then i just accept it fuck my dumbass damn why did i do that you know and then you got to go have the conversation that's uncomfortable <sighs> you know have them plug it <laughs> it's like you know i don't i, I kind of like space for uncomfortable conversations because yeah. you know that that's handling evolutionary pressure because yeah. evolutionary pressure if you're handling it right there's going to be wouldn't say desire, an impulse to understand. That just doesn't stop. Right? It's like, you, you know, you you get to a place of understanding, it just opens up a whole new realm to understand. Just more and more and more. And just be able to go with that flow and not look for an ending to any of that. You know, because the minute you start looking for the ending, yeah, you got madness on your hands. You know, to be able to, because, you know, it's like enlightenment. It's not a one done thing. You still have minutes to live. You've got hours to live, days and months and years. And that shit ain't always going your way. You know, so you can have your high days, but you can have some serious days of instability. It's like, how do you handle that? Right? I mean, that to me is. After so many days of sunshine, sometimes a little rain is. is necessary. Well, it's like you were saying about happiness. I remember I was sitting in jail when I wrote this. The depth of your sorrow is what contains the height of your joy. Mm-hmm. Right? You have to be able to dig down deep. You know, and pain is the thing, one thing that eventually you listen to. <laughs> you know what I mean? You might be numb to it all you can, but eventually you hear what it's saying to you. Right? And it's telling, you know, I mean, I know the deepest pain I've been in. It's just not living right. And what does that mean? Right by anyone else's standards? No, right by your own soul. You know, that you're, you know, don't. And I, what, you know, and a lot of times it's wanting to protect the heart so much that you lead with your head. You know, feeling the, the heart is so fragile that you just lead with the head. And that's just like leading with a hammer, right? It's the heart that actually has the more deep communication. The mind is just a hammer. It's just everything's a nail, right? And to be, and when people shut that heart down because of the fear, and they start relying on the mind, yeah, that's a it's a detrimental place. It's one that you better learn because you know you you lead from the heart, and you know, and that's probably one of society's biggest problems. They don't do that anymore. They lead from the pocketbook. You know, it's like, whoa, whoa. They lead from the classes, and that's everybody's looking to graduate into a higher class. It's like there isn't any of that. You can pretend there is all day long. You can make this cute little game, this little puppet show, this this little fiasco, and pretend it's all real. But in the end, you're just pretending. Everybody eats, shits, sleeps, pisses. Everybody gets pimples. Everything's. It's not like there's some people who get to rise above all that. Everybody has to deal with it. I had this old friend of mine. He's. I would get on him about how he was at seventy because it was like, dude, come on, clean yourself up. He's like. You know, one day you're going to be my age. I'm <laughs> just like, yeah, and I ain't going to be anything like that. He's like, hope all you want because you will get visited by things you would have never imagined. You know, and old age will bring that. You know, I watch, I watch my mom. She's 79. A trooper, but you can see. It. It's good. I think, you know, there's some people in the family. It makes them really nervous. I just try to get as close to it as I can. It's like I don't want it, – it's uncomfortable seeing someone, you know, age it's just rough you know because you remember them as this young vibrant person mm-hmm. we're all going to be bones in the ground at some point and when that process is accelerated and you're watching it a lot of people just get uncomfortable and want to pretend it's not happening 
To me, it's like, no, that's, that's not honoring. Honoring is being present for that. You know, I, I, like, I was just out to see my mom. It's like, I could tell, you know, you need, you need someone around. You need someone to help you out a little bit. So, you know, I go out there and do that. I told her, I said, I should, you should be coming home with me. You just need to be living up here. You know, I think she probably will eventually because it's her favorite place. You know? She just doesn't want to be a burden, but this is actually her favorite place. Yeah, yeah she's vibrant. You know, yeah. and everybody loves her. Mm-hmm. Right. They see her as, as, as their own mother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's yeah. a very mothering figure and wise, you know, and mm-hmm. she's talked me off the off the rails several times. You know, off the off the edge. You know, mm-hmm. she's always been my the devil's advocate, my strongest ally, and my strongest uh, what would you call it? Crit, crit, critique, mm-hmm. the person who critiques. She will not yeah. let me live a lie at all. No, she she demands that I live in integrity. <laughs> yeah, demands it actually, which is you know it's nice to have that in your life. Because some, you know, if you didn't have anyone, kind of as a marker for for you that knows you well enough. And that's why I'm going. We'll be back home for Alaska for Thanksgiving. I will not let mother down. Yeah, nope, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But even that, we can get so much accomplished in that time frame. You know? We will. We yeah. will. Yeah, I mean, we don't. I mean, we're just here. So. Yeah, my yeah. traveling's done, so I'm here for the duration. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know. Get a couple concerts in there, find a hot spring one day. Mm-hmm. Oh, we'll we have to enjoy yeah. ourselves too. Yeah. A hot spring would be nice. Because we've been just at it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Work, 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 work. We're gonna have some fun too. Mm-hmm. Right? That's yeah, a good idea. Absolutely. We should do that. That's my that's the my hardest thing is making room for fun. I know. Maybe maybe as a reward for building the sauna, we'll we'll sauna one day and go to, Yeah. Well, there's if those if those concert. hot springs are open, they have a cold plunge out back in the river. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's silly. Oh, I see. No, I, I was walking <laughs> we're walking through uh, Costco and I saw this whatever cold bath. They're, they're selling tubs, cold plunge, cold plunge I didn't tubs. See that. Like, like a blue cube. That? Yeah, I, did, I mean, I don't know. I was, really? We were looking for something else. We, we went, have a tub that in was, the yard. That, that must have been. We must have set a record for this, the quickest Costco run ever. We went up that's one, it. down. Up. We were out of there in 20 minutes. They didn't have what we want, but we left with an armful of shit. Anyway. One, one box. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, didn't, didn't, didn't have what we wanted, but we did want the maple syrup. You know? <laughs> did want the honey. If you really yeah. want to do a cold plunge, we can fill that bathtub. No, I don't want a outside. cold plunge. I never said that. No, and then I'm happy with it. The, if I'm you want to do the, the thing where you break the, the thermal barrier around yeah. your body, just take a blender in there and just kind of dip it in the water and just stir it up a little bit. Yeah, no, just walking outside covered in sweat will... I think, cold, I think if you lunch. just sit outside the cold, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Immediately. Thing. immediately we're we're going to take off the cold plunge community now. They're very adamant about their ways. What was it? The ice, <laughs> ice bucket challenge or something they were doing? Yeah, it was, one? Yeah. It's like, okay, it kind of reminded me of like when the, at the end of the game, like the Super Bowl or whatever, the guys the dump winning, the Gatorade. Dump the Gatorade. It's like, is that why that they even have shit? Do they even <laughs> drink the Gatorade or is this just a dump? You probably the shouldn't place? drink that Gatorade. Yeah, probably shouldn't. Yeah, it's illegal in other countries because yeah. shit happens. <laughs> Yeah. The things they do in America. Yeah, I mean, well, there's all kinds of, you know, I've been watching. It's suddenly now, like, the big food is is kind of the thing now people are starting to pay attention to. Oh, there's, there's a whole lot of shit going on there. There is. There's a book I just ordered. I was listening to the author of it. It's called Fiat Food. And it goes, <sighs> it goes deep into the whole thing. And I'm Your really excited. I mean, it was like a decade ago, or probably 15 years at this point, I Dollar menu, you know, fast food restaurant. I'd ordered like eight little burgers because I skipped lunch. And I eat all these little burgers, and I'm like, I'm like hungry an hour later. I'm like, how the hell did I eat eight little burgers? And I still because didn't have any nutritional value. Right. And uh, right. so my body's just processing. It's like in one hand out the other, but it's not actually sustaining you. It's not giving you what you need. You yeah, know? it's actually and that's very like 15, hard. Fifteen you know, years ago, it's hard. And, to uh, and, and a lot of food that's prepared, like, you know, in a microwave, I understand you're not getting radiation from the food, but it gets so hot from the, you know, water. Cooking the water out of it. Well, yeah, well, like the too. water is moving so quickly that it breaks down the vitamins before they get into your body. Mm-hmm. So you get the nutritional value of what you're eating. Yeah, yeah, you just basically, you know. Yeah, gone. And, uh, but there's a place for, for 
Well, that for knows. microwaves, like maybe I'm not sure no, what they are. That's what they call it when you use the micro to say you're nuking your food. No, I, I well, that's what it, it. That's I'm not saying it in the kitchen for cooking stuff, but I'm saying there's a place for microwaves. I mean, all these transmissions like open to satellites. I mean, if that wasn't a microwave, it wouldn't get there. Right, right, right. So we're just not good for humans. Yeah, I'm not trying to to yeah. cook you know food with it, but microwaves are. I'm, you know, the, a hell of everybody, an everybody likes the internet, it's you know, all, it's, it's a, a hell of an invention. Yeah, I'll say no, that. Yeah, for sure. That's how technology sets free. Yeah. It kills you. <laughs> 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 Inevitably. Yeah. I mean, you look at everything. It's like there's, there's, there's no solutions. There's just trade-offs. There's always just been trade-offs. It's like, okay, now you got speedy access to the internet. You might have a brain tumor. But you do have speedy access to yeah. all the information you want. Yeah, one of my trinkets I brought up was a, a microwave detector. Right. right. Yeah. yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Yeah, a little. We still don't know how to use it, but we've been playing. EMF, what you do is you go hit the the uh, box yeah. going into the house. We yeah. found the Wi-Fi router going. right away. You yeah. He found yeah. the router. He didn't know where the Wi-Fi router was, but he turned on the thing. Is it over here in the corner? I was like, yeah, it's behind yeah. the <laughs> yeah. You're just right. emanating well, out. We were, we, were all, uh, we were all in the kitchen, and we're sitting around the table, you know, and we're like, who's got the biggest magnetic field? You know, and we're all grabbing onto this thing. <laughs> and, well, and, I kind of wonder, you know, <laughs> if we <laughs> could, if, if you could actually, you know, and there's probably data out there that – was the rise in like cognitive malfunctioning and crazy kind of mental illness running around? Does that did that go up with the internet? Um, you know what I mean, what, and not from the internet, the information and all the content. Well, no, it's just, just the, knowing, the waves. It's just no, well, and and I and is it the the waves? Of the internet? Is it the radiation rain. we're getting from from solar towers, right. or the sun towers, or because or, or, when the sun hits, that can fuck somebody up. It could be it could be any numerous things, electrical fields, sure, sure. electric grid. I mean, it could be, but you know, how is many it the, is it the food we eat? Is it genetically modified garbage? Like, you know, what what is causing, or is it a combination of all? Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. like what are your product of your environment? Your product of of what you consume? Your product of the surroundings and people you interact with? So. These people didn't just, you know, come out the door crazy. They they were they grew years and years and years to get that crazy. Yeah, you know. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's yeah, a process. It's <laughs> right. right. So, so it's like, a dedication. And uh, it would be it would be one uh, it'd be one thing to to be able to you know, <clears throat> know for a fact why people are the way they are, but. It's just part of the mystery. Yeah, and I think you know? that really, ultimately, those things can only be found on an individual level. Yeah, and uh, ultimately, that's the personal experience you're having. Yeah, when I was a kid, I, I thought it would be, you know, I liked hearing everybody's individual voices. You know, the way and, and the naivete of being so young. You know, like, I want to hear every person's voice. I'd I'd go say hi to anybody. Hey, how's it going? And just to hear the sound of their voice. You know, mm -hmm, sure. And uh, then as I grow older, I'm like, oh, you realize how much you don't know. And like, well, there's 8 billion people on the earth. And I'm never going to even meet a fraction of these people. Not even a percentage. Of not, not even, well, I mean, a fraction. A million zero. A zero, 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 yeah. And maybe, you know, maybe to help meet my people in my, my lifetime, or I don't know, possibly. But, you know, that's, there's a lot of people out in the world, and I'm still... I'm surprised we can all communicate. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. What's uh, that? Two hours? All right. Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. That's it. We got work tomorrow. You got work tomorrow. <laughs> oh, wait. No, I thought we were, we thought we were going to the hot springs. No. <laughs> no, no. First, more work. Not tomorrow. First more work. First more work. Then not tomorrow. We'll go right. to the hot springs the day they clean it, the day after they clean it. Uh -oh. no, you don't so have all. You got to know. You got to get the inside schedule. Yeah, because otherwise it can get a little stinky. Yeah. Well. Right. Like a dead we'll have to look for the right omen at the right time. That's right. And uh, hot, hot it's called good. Monday. Monday. Yeah. Monday. Monday. <laughs> okay. Monday. It's called Monday. Monday. Mondays are good. Monday's I like good Mondays. Day. Yeah. Me too. So we work in the morning and then leave in the afternoon. Yeah. And then yeah, we'll absolutely. go. We'll go to the simple eatery. Well, I like. Go I like goal, goal oriented. You know, I think we should have deck finished before we yeah, definitely. you know go 
go hot well, spring or maybe that's a lot of deck. That's a lot of deck. What's twenty five hundred square feet for God's sake? Uh well, I think it's like thirteen thirteen. Thirteen. Well, 13. that's that's minus the areas for the yurts. Right. Well, it's twenty five hundred altogether. It is. Well, you, correct. I get. I get. Totally get that. It might even be bigger. It might be twenty six hundred now that we move the yurts off the backside. It may be. Yeah, and, we got a lot but the deck on. of what we we're building, I think, is thirteen thirteen plus two giant yurts. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Right. Okay, so yes. the decking. I'm not saying the sit panels and all that. As long as you got your head wrapped around it, because I like that. Okay. Me and Wally are in the same boat. I noticed that me and Wally are are of the same nature tell, that way. <laughs> you can sit there and tell us. Just give us just 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 the, well, <laughs> until doing, we see it we just don't don't, don't, don't you yeah, love the numbers see, like, oh, yeah. the numbers on the cardboard on the ground <laughs> yeah, 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 the board. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you want a zigzag we got a system <laughs> no, I know zigzags <laughs> um, <laughs> I just that's over there no one's going to see that you, yeah, the you see a crooked board and somehow you make it straight it's just insane it is beautiful yeah it's beautiful it's a beautiful thing you definitely bring you you bring the light of consciousness to building yeah it looks beautiful yeah it's fun yeah, well, we have a good time. You know, the, I hate to be cliche, but it's like the so enjoy what you do and have work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. Somebody told me as of recent, don't let something you do and enjoy and love doing become something you hate. Right. So mm -hmm. you uh, it works both ways. You calibrate. Know, calibrate. Mm -hmm. Modulate yourself. Modulate yourself. Take it to the fucking hot spring, spring for a day. Yeah, modulate. whether the deck is done or not. Hot springs Monday. Right, well, goals are nice. Monday night. Goals are it's good. It's a good goal. And if we get so close, then I'd be like, okay, maybe hot springs get pushed off till Tuesday because, yeah. oh, that's an extra day. But no longer. Then no, no longer. Because then we're we're foregoing Wednesday our own yeah, self care. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what does that happen? Then we walk around with cramps. Yeah, sorry, it's getting old. Yeah. Go Sunday. No, <laughs> anyway, we're out of here. Sunday. Thanks, thanks well, for joining. Sunday, yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Have a great night. We'll see, see you all. Have a great life. See you all next Thursday. Is this every Thursday you guys do this? Yeah, we every two Thursdays. We run on our own time. Yeah. We just do it when we feel like it. Cool. When we have the energy. We don't have anybody that we have to answer to, and I remember, we're never going to have anybody we have to answer yeah. to. Well, that's yeah. yourselves. So the content we put is exactly what we want. I don't mind having anybody telling me, you know, because some nights we just come in here and rant. Most, most. Chris gets a little. Chris gets a little cantankerous from time to time. He just well, sits there and you know, poo poos on society like he's the king of the world. He's he can be a real asshole. Yeah, well, yeah time is talking the third person again. Yeah. <laughs> see, see right there. I'm playing Trump's card. Let's just talk about myself in the third person. All right, all right, we're out. All right, all right. Good night. See ya. Peace.